What is going on, everybody? It is episode 560 of Pop Culture Crisis. It's going to be uh, one for the boys today, is it not? Boys, boys, boys. Boys, 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 boys. <laughs> My name is Brett, and I am here today with a special guest co-host today. Hi. How you doing? My name's Phil. I'm the lead singer of the uh, heavy metal band All That Remains. I'm a very failed musician, anti-communist, and uh, counter-revolutionary. And we have a very special guest here today. Introduce yourself, sir. My name's Cody. <laughs> That's all I got. No, uh, I'm a failed everything, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. I don't uh, buy it. But we're uh, we're surviving. I've been doing YouTube for years, so that's pretty much what I do. Yeah, it's uh, it's Camelot three three one over that's on YouTube. It. Yeah. Yes, uh, you cover all sorts of stuff. I already see people in the chat asking about whether there will be naked snack today. Um, I think that is against the oh, yeah. rules today. No milk steak. No, no <laughs> milk. No <laughs> milk. Here's, here's the naked thing. snack, right? It's the yeah. milk steak, right? I don't know what it is. What is, yeah. it? is the, was it milk steak or is it the the milk snakes when yeah when no, it hit milk the final snake, okay, goal yes all right yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I believe that Mary would have a problem with that if there was any of any such nakedness in the studio today yeah Mary yeah Mary Mary should be here as a a calming mediator uh, yeah mediator like yeah. A, a a you know some something to regulate the uh, testosterone because the testosterone is through the roof here today so yeah. she should be here but because she's not. <laughs> Boys, 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 boys. The conversation was already in a direction we never would have taken it before the show. It was, you know? it, it, it was <laughs> definitely something Mary would have disapproved. And we're gonna yeah. and, and to be fair, like Phil drew my attention back to the Elizabeth Hurley story, which we'll get into uh, in the in the intro to the show today. But guys, we got a lot of stuff to get into before we do go. Though, would you hit the like button on this video? Subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already, please and thank you. We have passed 100,000 subscribers. We are on our way onwards and upwards. Remember. All super chats twenty dollars and over. We will interrupt the discussion and we will read them right then and there. Which this one here from Dubby Nanners says, uh, Camelot. I started watching your videos like three years ago when Games GameStop was a huge deal. Brett and Mary need to drink fight milk. Let's uh -huh. go. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I can't technically drink fight milk because I don't, I'm I'm sober, so I I can't do that. Oh, really? uh, that which which would be even worse. The idea of drinking that. Do you want to tell everybody what that is first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just um, it's just a full glass of milk. Um, I use like uh, lactose free milk, you know. Smart. Um, Smart. Fair lap. Oh, God. It's the best. Fair it, oh. Phil is a very big proponent of Fair Yes. Life. Fair, yeah. life fair Life chocolate milk is the yeah. best after after workout shake. Dude, it's something about them beating them little cows. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Smack them around. We yeah. got them. Uh, like, they need a kick. Give them the kick. Wait, Just, isn't, isn't that, is that like adrenochrome for cows? Then? I mean, like, maybe. Is that yeah. what it is? Uh, well, so, so it's, it's the milk. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, Fair Life, they uh, they got like exposed for like beating the hell out of some like kid, little baby cows <laughs> at their company, and I'm like, beat them more because this stuff tastes amazing. Like, is that they what beat makes the it so sweet? out of the cow? I, uh, I disavow that statement in case Pete is watching. If Pete is watching, it, it wasn't me. I don't want them memeing me. On I, I hope Pete is watching. Everyone hates Peter. Man. Everybody, yeah. Literally, everybody. <laughs> everybody hates Peter. If, if Peter is hating on you, everyone's like, he probably did something right. Screw you, Peter. Nothing tastes better than trauma, apparently. <laughs> no. No. It's like trauma. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah, it's just a um, full glass of milk, uh, two whole eggs, and like uh, I usually do like a shot and a half of whiskey or something. See, like, so so the idea that I would have to do like the virgin version of that with like no alcohol is a hundred times worse if you don't get to end it uh, drunk. Yeah. yeah, probably. I mean, I feel, I feel like you have to take like, seeing as you don't get the alcohol, like you get the milk, but then you'd have to like drink like like vinegar or something <laughs> to get the same effect, right? Something yeah. you're just like, Ugh, but you don't, you don't get the booze out of, you know? Guys, this stream is going to be all over the place because, um, first of all, I'm going to have to, I'm trying to follow the super chats as we go. I will do men. my very best. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit untethered today. And I think that that's it just will. fine. Also, so you, we were talking before the show uh, about one of the ways in, uh, on your show that you do is that you say that like $100 super chats and they're going to put their name on the back of your car. Yeah. Right. Because you are yeah. racing now professionally. Yeah. It's if you, I have a Wikipedia now <laughs> and it says I'm a professional stock car racer. Not just oh. running away from cops right hilarious yeah. no um but yeah so every uh, every 100 our, our super chat or more i put on the trunk lid of my cars yeah um nice and uh it's just it really creates a good incentive uh, people that like like to support you already in that way sure, get yeah. represented in some way shape or form and i you know it's i can't really <laughs> i would love to somehow pay these people back for all their their love and support and i'm just trying to find a way to represent them because uh you know people choose to support me 
a lot for whatever reason. So well, I said before I will open that up. If there are any hundred dollar super chats today, we will do that. Oh yeah, Sick. yes, yeah. we will. We will put them. But get a picture of all of them. You're gonna get a picture. Oh yeah, of I'll get a video. Mm-hmm. Like That's a, awesome. Yeah, I'll get a video of it and everything. So. That's awesome, guys. We got a bunch of stuff to get into today. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I want to talk about the fact that Hollywood is in crisis. I think this is something that everyone can get behind. I found this article last week from the. It's an article from the USC Annenberg Inclusion Initiative. If you don't know who that is, it's this awful group of people that basically boil everything in Hollywood down to demographics and it's really really stupid but the article is essentially saying that 2023 was a 10-year low for women leads in movies to which i'm sure everybody who watches channels like this would say how is that even possible right no not even possible so we're going to get into that also pilot episodes are down everything's down in hollywood we're not just going to talk about that though we are going to talk to you and we're going to talk about your career and everything how everything's going with uh, your new endeavor with racing but also the fact that you keep getting swatted is a thing <sighs> this is wild i don't know why. and people like are, are claiming it's it's either fake or made up even though like I have it on video and everything. People yeah. are wild, dude. So we're going to talk about that and, and also your your career with racing and everything like that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Also, I found this hilarious article that basically says that Gen Z has zero work ethic and they call in sick more than Gen X or any other generation in history, which is like, of course, right? Well, of course they do. Yes. They have mental health days. No, that's literally what it says. In Whatever the, that in is. It says mental health days. <laughs> I, would, I would love for that. If I, could, if I could have mental health days, that would be fantastic. Yeah. But uh, I don't think I've ever actually gotten to take a mental health day from this. Uh, the show must go on, right? Like, yeah. oh, uh, there's a tornado. Got to go do the show. Oh, like yeah. uh, a family member died. Oh, you got to go to the show. Okay, that doesn't happen. But uh, the point being that you got to do your work. You, people get mad. We be, came ca- back. be careful when you say things like a family member died and Tim makes me work. People are going <laughs> to... People are going to have an no, issue no, no, with that's that. The thing. They, wouldn't, they wouldn't make me work. But the thing is, is like when you get tied to the algorithm, right? Someone's going to listen and yeah. hear that. Yeah. Hear that. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it's just really, really funny because you take your job very, very seriously. And it's uh, like when you take more than a couple days off, you feel awful. Like at least I do, right? When I take a couple days off, by the end of the weekend, I'm like desperate to get back to work, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, it, in roll off, uh, <laughs> when I was working, you know, in retail for 13 years, mm-hmm. I looked forward to that. Um, but yeah, now when everything I do is tied to my own income. And if I just don't do it, I don't have income. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I'll be like, I'll crawl to my chair. Yeah, and I like no, when, put when I was on with you, you were sick on. as a, <laughs> when, when I was on your show, you were sick as dog. Yeah, yeah, like you, yeah. you were, you were like you could tell. Like by the end of the stream, he's like hanging on to his yeah. mic, and he's like, "It's it's been a long one today, guys. We got to get there." Tuck it out. It's not easy. It's, it's very very difficult. Oh, yeah. Luckily, I'm hyperactive most of the time. Thank so God. Yeah, good, dude, right? I love that. I love when people just talk, and I'm just like, All right, cool. I'll just sit over here and feel terrible. Zia, Zia is my co-host on Saturday. Zia Land, um, over on Twitter. And I text her before the show and I was like, I'm going to need you to like talk and like do things while I just sit there and die. And she's like, I got you. And I'm like, all right, cool. You just take, you carry the show, please. Yep. I'm dying. So. All right, then let's go ahead and get into it. Then let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, I want to let everyone know there is still merch available. Uh, remember the new Australian PCC EKG hoodie is there, which you can get. Uh, so we had somebody like there was a misprint of it. The Teespring, which is, uh, you know, has its ups and downs. Yeah. So if you've used that, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, they, they sent um, uh, someone who watches the show, uh, a young lady who watches the show, her hoodie with the, the logo upside down. Oh my and they're God. like, oh, it's awesome. It looks like there's Ian a, made it. There's a $20 uh, job. Oh, see, Phil's, I, I'm going to need you to help me here today, will, Phil. It's going to be will. Phil's job. And I'll, as <laughs> usual, like my YouTube is like backed up and it's not uh, it's not catching up there. Okay, it says, uh, Heel, Heel Rock called Cody boy earlier today in an Insta promo. I'm now fully convinced that Cody Rhodes <laughs> is a black man. Brett, are you finally going to get more value from your Peacock account and watch WrestleMania 40 this year? That was from Dat Pie over That was there. from Dat Pie over there. I, I might. Uh, like, uh, back in the day, I would not I would never pay the money for... I'll be honest. I, I sailed the high seas for WrestleMania when I was really, really poor. I, I, <laughs> I'll probably watch it this year. I'll probably take a look to see if they allow Cody to actually finish the story as they keep saying i did see however that um the rock just like secured a bunch of copyrights for all his old catchphrases and stuff like that so he can start making money off of all of them which has to be nice you know considering the fact that like if you smell what the rock is cooking Mm -hmm. was owned by the wwe Mm -hmm. and they own they own the name john cena 
Oh, really? Yeah, huh? he, they, get a, they get a cut of, of everything that he does. Yeah, it's probably not his real name. That's yeah. I don't, I don't know for sure if it is or not. I believe, no, I believe it is. is it's, really? Yeah, They're just like, we're going to copyright yeah. your name, homie. Yeah. That's mine! Yeah. Mom gave that to you! Mom gave that to me! <laughs> or, or, I, somebody, somebody can fact check me on that. I thought it was That's his real awesome. name. I, I thought it was his real name. I'm not I'm not 110% sure. You'll have to let me know, but I was almost positive. That That's was hilarious. Right, I'm going to need you to catch the 20s as we go. Roger they, that. They come, because I'm uh, I my, you. my YouTube keeps uh, stalling here. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So last night we went and saw Dune. We went and saw Dune too. Uh, here's the funny thing. So I just kind of assume, and this is like a, a, a fault of mine. I assume that everybody in this space is like done and seen and experienced all the exact same thing. So I didn't even think to ask you ahead of time. I was like, have you seen Dune? Do you Bef want to come with to see Dune? Before you get there, did you guys, or like on your way there, were you listening to Iron Maiden? No, no. Why we should have been. You should have been. Yeah, absolutely. To tame a land, to tame a land is uh, is a song by Iron Maiden. It's about Dune. You yeah. Gotta... Or uh, Toto did the soundtrack from the original Dune. You could have got okay. yourself in the mood by watching. There the you original. go. That's, that's another one's acceptable. Yeah. Okay. But it's it's so off to great. a good start. Uh, Twelve million in opening night previews, which is up uh, by double what it was for the first one. It was only five for the first one, and I think what they're counting here is that the two of that twelve million came from like like pre-screenings to yeah. people that like bought fan access screenings to it so good for them and i do recommend like i'm gonna have a review up for dune tomorrow i do recommend everyone go and just check it out i, I really think it's a lot of fun if you want to see a movie that actually needs to be seen in theaters yeah to be appreciated you don't want to watch this movie even on your what it was what's the biggest size tv you got in your house I have a projector. Okay, it so goes, it's probably over a hundred inches. You head. still want you want to watch this on something bigger than a projector? Well, you, it's the no, dude. It's the the dude that does this is you know the same guy that did Arrival, right? Yep, and and Sicario. There's but, something about the way he uses or whoever he employs to use these soundtrack noises. Yeah, um, where it just like is like a giant horn, and that's the soundtrack. Wah! And you're like, dude, this is like making me shake like all the way in my pits and in my holes. And it, it makes you feel things. Which holes? It, it's all. Oh, all of them. All, and it, it emotionally <laughs> evokes like something in you. I never saw Dune 1. So it was intimate then. Yeah, it was nice. Yes. Dude, I was like, Ooh, oh my That's God. Like, every time the dude like walks up on the rock and he's like not even saying anything. And it's just like, Wah! like the horn in the back. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> again. Let's do it. It was good. So, guys, go ahead Killing and check it. it out this weekend. It's absolutely <laughs> worth your time. Uh, and it's a good story, and you don't get a whole lot of that from Hollywood these days. Worms. So. Worms. <laughs> there's, dude, there's, like, the worms, bro. Give me more worms. I love the worms. There was not enough boobies, but there was worms. I also saw this. Uh, speaking of speaking of that, uh, this guy wore this shirt to the, uh, to the stream. It says, I'm just here to fuck the popcorn bucket. I kid you not. You can buy that shirt. You can buy that shirt now. We weren't, and we didn't have access to the popcorn bucket because we didn't go to AMC to yeah, see it. Yeah. But this guy, I like that he like blocked his own face out to do this. <laughs> I didn't know that they were selling that popcorn yes. bucket. Did we, you uh, do that? So I, dude, this whole thing just was dropped a, in my lap with no context. It's I'm a like, what is popcorn this? Bucket. Yeah, dude. They, they all they have to do is tighten it up a little bit so it's like not you know in its fifties. It's in its twenties. Yep. And I think it'd be a very viable option. Look at it. <laughs> I might have to buy that I mean, shirt. maybe. It goes along with the freaking, uh, the horn. The, the best part would be like, if you removed the words Dune Part 2 from this shirt, you're just like, what? What does that shirt even mean? It looks, it looks sexy. It's just hilarious that like, it, they, I mean, they're getting away with using the official logo too, you know? Yep. That's not an official shirt. No, I don't, no, I don't definitely think not. can't be official I didn't think shirt. so. I, didn't, I mean, I, you know, that's I, I know Etsy, that was a stupid question. That's an Etsy product if I've ever seen All right, it. Yeah. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about Superman. The reason I say Superman is because James Gunn's movie Superman Legacy has officially been renamed Superman, and there is a big question mark right now around the budget to this film, which has been reported, rumored, not confirmed, to be $363 million, oh my God. which is absolutely, like, the coke-snorting executives who are just, like, throwing money. It's starting to feel like money laundering. Most I, of the I mean, time. All of them are. What, yes. yeah. what are you spending that yes. money on? Like Coke and hookers, for sure. How long is the movie? <laughs> the runtime? <laughs> they, they just did day one of filming. Oh, so there's no runtime? No. I mean, you could do three straight hours of top-notch special effects yep. and not come to $150 million. 
right? So, yes. So, I mean, it, it, Three it, hours it, it of like the best. With really good planning and a really, really good cinematographer. Like we were talking about uh, the director, the, the cinematographer for Dune, who has done all, like he did cre the creator this year, which was also unbelievable cinematography. When you watch those movies and you see just how much work went into planning each shot when it's not the Marvel <clears> slop <throat> where they just throw a bunch of crap on screen. What I was pointing out when we were watching it was, and I'm getting a little bit off topic here, but basically like when you watch a Marvel movie and it's just nothing but CGI, have you ever noticed how everything is like painfully in focus? Like, yeah. There is no depth of field yeah. to anything you're watching, but we were watching this movie when we were watching Dune too, there is such deliberate camera work and the ability to use depth of field really helps along with a really, really unique color grading helps you buy into the fact that what you're looking at is CGI, but it feels very, very It felt real. like I was mm. in the desert yes. and I was really thirsty. So <laughs> yeah. Superman legacy director, James Gunn, he is saying that this is not true, that the budget is not $363 million. He goes, absolutely not. How in the world would they know what the budget of the movie is? Well, this is what they said on World of Real. It says James Gunn's Superman legacy but has a budget of $363 million because apparently a Redditor... A Redditor went and found this out. It says, a Reddit user Googled the government website for the Ohio Motion Picture Tax Credit because they're going to be hiring almost 3,300 Ohio residents to work on this film. Uh, and the page includes public information about the productions, and it looks like the budget was accurate. Superman Legacy filed a tax credit application for $36,972, uh, $36,000, or is it $36 million? $36,972,289, million, <laughs> million and the full budget of the picture is 363 million 845 uh that's insane but at least at least yeah. he's employing like extras instead of yeah. just cgi and all these extras in that's kind of so, cool <laughs> the Ohio spend represents 10.16% of the budget. Additionally, 25% of the budget is being shot in Ohio. Another article reported this number. They have to provide all shot. of this information to due to section 122.85 of the Ohio code. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you got a $20 super chat from organizedbusinessservices.com. Thanks, Brett, for being my virtual friend. This is my last super chat for a while. I'm moving to Cebu City with my 25-year-old girlfriend, Maybe it's good that Mary is there not is not there today. I can hear it now, Mary. I'm 56 and my 25 year old girlfriend. <laughs> That's called good winning. for you. Homeboy. That's winning. Good for you. That, that is. is winning. Well, what Victory. we should do, what we Victorious. should do, we should uh, actually business services, my friend. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this and set it aside, and I will yeah. ask Mary's opinion on Monday, and we will get back to you on what she thinks about this. Perhaps you know you she will do, have a different uh, opinion. Uh, uh, organized business services. You should marry that girl and then get her pregnant. Yes. There you go. Have kids. Have yeah. loads of kids. Have kids. Have loads That'll of kids. upset people a lot. If you're looking to get people mad, mm. knock your wife up. So, again, <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea whether uh, w whether this is actually true. It would be very, very interesting to find out later whether Superman Legacy actually had a budget this big. But like you said, if these studios want to start making money, they just have to spend less. It's not that difficult. I mean, honestly, I think that's probably true. Like, I, I would love to see Hollywood take a more term. Like, okay, for the next five years, uh, even the tentpole films were capping our budgets at $150 million. Yeah. Like, uh, it's yeah. kind of like, so there's this scene in the, in the pilot to the show The West Wing where the, the very liberal um, policymaker is, like, arguing with the conservative guy in Congress. I think he's in Congress. And he's like, can we just agree to not legalize, like, grenade launchers? No. Like, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, like, I love the idea that they're like, can we just agree that even the big budget movies, they don't need to be more than $150 million. They don't need to be $300 million. Look, I I, I can't conceive of why it costs that That's much what I'm money. Thinking. I can't I, figure it out. Dude, Titanic, for example, mm -hmm. and I know this was 20 years ago, 25 years ago. You love that movie. Oh, God, yeah, dude, <laughs> please put it in me. No, um, Titanic, they built a Titanic, like a, a half scale version or 85% or scale version of Titanic and sank it. And it was still only $200 million over the entire course of production. Why, like, why does a movie cost as much as three stealth fighters? Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. it it's, it's because uh, somebody is skimming somewhere 30 to 40, 40 million dollars yeah. off yeah. something. Yeah. It, uh, catering's not that damn expensive. No. Oh, yeah. No, was it, did you remember there was a story like a I, while ago that said, um, who was it? Somebody said that the, the the catering budget for a Marvel movie was the 
whole expense for Andromeda? God. Or was the whole expense for Battlestar Galactica or yeah. something like I'm that? I'm sure the catering is ridiculous. And also, you know that the ridiculous requests, This is so this is a little behind the scenes information for you. The ridiculous requests from artists or stars or whatever, they're almost always attached to catering if they're like any kind of service. Get stuff. rid of the green m and yeah, No green m and Well, if, you're, if you've got like... If you got like masseuses and blah, 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 all that stuff falls under hospitality. So you get people that come in and give massages and stuff like that. So all that stuff would, would be under hospitality and catering and stuff. It's the easiest place to hide stuff. Yeah, I've done it yeah. myself, I promise. Yeah, you could, I mean, and you know some of these actors are like like really specific and they're like, I want like the, uh, the widest slobber pocket at 1 p.m. after every like, after we cut every single day. Yeah. No, just need need two or three slobber pockets three times a day, and that's and you know they're getting high class stuff like Las Vegas. The, you know what the, I guarantee the chat is like, what is he talking about? Slobber pocket. <laughs> um, I guarantee the chat. Half the chat's like, I don't half gets know. It, the other half doesn't. That's fine. Yeah. It's very uh, that meme of the the, the father from whatever uh, the father. Those from who know, and those what? who don't know. No, oh, those. From the two, uh, the, those the who know and who don't yeah. know. Yes. Yeah, the Incredibles, yeah. Those who know and those who don't know. <laughs> so, okay. So, not just that, guys. Uh, we do have a first look because the movie has been announced as just Superman now. It's no longer called Superman Legacy. They shortened the name of the film. Uh, but we do have the first look. Uh, now, I heard some people saying that these are not real. Again, I don't know, but the trunks are on the outside there. I like it. I yeah. imagine, yeah, I, I I think the trunks on the outside are okay, but I do also Those look imagine, like booty shorts, not the, not the trunks. They, they, they're, they're strikingly similar to the underwear that I wear. The, there you the, go. Yeah, they're called boy shorts, <laughs> they, dude. Well, the, well, they're just two-inch boxer briefs, yeah. is what they call But But, like, once you get that into post-production and they do color correction and stuff, it'll look fine, Oh, honestly. exactly. No, 110%. A lot of people, like, the worst thing you can do is base your opinions on a movie on just stills you yeah. see. Uh, mm -hmm. We even, like, we kind of laid the ground for work for that when they were talking about um, like Batgirl and there was all these horrible press like all these horrible pictures that were coming out about Batgirl I'm like once it's color like again yeah. we'll never know because that movie never ended up coming yeah. out and will never come out you know what else look, look at the, the cape being so short I guarantee yeah. the cape is CG in oh the, yeah in the movie yeah. it'll be CG though, they, they know, do, so that way That's, you can do well no because uh, in Batman in the Snyder movies Batman's cape was real Superman's cape was CG okay, so well, yeah so that, this one will likely be a lot longer and yeah, more billowy there is afterwards. no that looks like that looks really silly. Yeah, you it know, does. like a, a cape like that. Capes nowadays, like ever since Spawn in the in the comic books, yeah. like if capes are not gigantic and they have and have a gaudy. life of their own, yeah. they kind of yeah. look silly. You yeah. can't pull it off. They have to be completely uh, not useful at all. Yeah, it's got to be like <laughs> Doctor Strange's cape yeah. that like is actually like cracking jokes in the movie. <laughs> well, yeah, but even, Bat even Batman's, even Batman's in the Nolan trilogy, that one of my favorite things that they did in that movie was awesome. when Lucius Fox uh, explains yes. how it works. How yes. he's, yeah. like, he's like, he's like, it's like it's it's basically mesh fabric. I genuinely like. I said this yesterday. I that I love the the Nolan Batman's, and I honestly. I don't think that there is any glaring problem that I find with the Nolan Batmans. You can fight me on that. I don't care. But I'm going to stop like, derailing the conversation. No, no, derail all you want. My <laughs> I, dude, I love them. Uh, they're awesome. They're so goddamn yeah. good. My they're hottest so good. take t to this day is that Batman Begins is the best of that trilogy. I still believe that. I still I, believe you know, the first I tell you what, better. I would not argue... <laughs> Like I, I don't have any kind of emotional attachment to any any of the individual movies. I just think that they're they're really really great. Yeah, you know, I think they they they, they work together so well, and I think they're the best telling of Batman yeah. and just. I can't say enough good stuff about them. I've watched them so many times. Yeah, so we'll have I've to watched those as much as I've watched like Star Wars movies, and I watched yeah. those when I was a kid. It's well, it's if a film can or a series of films can captivate me enough to have to watch it yearly. So yeah. I'll or watch multiple the, times, even just mm -hmm. getting more than one watch out of something. Oh yeah, really like well, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I watch it every year. The extended versions. Um, and then I have to watch The Hobbit. I don't even like those. Um, um, <laughs> I just have to uh, for some reason. Are, then, are, are you like a completionist? Like, yeah, you watch yeah. It, yeah. I'm, I'm not. Like I can, if I stop, like I can watch a TV show. I can watch 22 episodes. There's a 23rd episode. If I just stop liking it, I just won't finish Well, it. that's Dexter. Yeah. Like fourth, fourth season There's after the fourth season. There's nothing wrong it's with rough. not watching the last. Did you um, watch New Blood? Oh, yeah. I, it, it, I feel like it was better than the last two seasons of the original yeah. Dexter, but it was still kind of weird. Needed to take place in Miami. Yeah, and like, I didn't like his son. Yeah. His son was dumb. <laughs> this is really, really annoying the whole time. But, yeah, if a film can, or a series of films can captivate you enough to watch it yearly, like I do with Pirates, Lord of the Rings, 
Um, you know, I even watch Harry Potter every year because for some reason I don't even know why. What time of year do you watch it? I watch them randomly, but it's usually there. Well, so I'm off from because all year, I'm, every weekend, I'm in a different state. Yeah. And then, so in November and December, it's like the off period, maybe a little bit of January, I'll watch all that. And I'll sit beside the fire, just watch it. It's like they've turned those movies into like holiday movies. Like yeah. that's like if you notice like on HBO Max, they start really like heavily re-promoting it around holiday season because it's kind of been tied to Christmas yeah. in a lot of ways. Because they always would have the Christmas scenes in the books and in the movies. So somehow it got, because they weren't released, at least maybe the earlier ones were, but they were still released in the summer. Well, right. it was it was Chris Columbus. Yes. So Chris Columbus yep. directed those movies, and of course he's like, "Well, I got to get John Williams to do the score." Mm-hmm. And then like, there's just like when you watch Home Alone, yep. they all of Home Alone's weird music is like just it's just Christmas now. The beep 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 beep, yep. beep 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 beep. And then when you watch Harry Potter, like John Williams is like kind of lazy and bored, so he's like, "Ah, oh, I guess when they're walking in the main hall, I'm gonna do beep, beep 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 beep." Oh, great! Now it's Christmas movie because he used almost the exact same like like melody in that scene in every movie of Harry Potter's until Chris Columbus got out of it as he did in Home Alone. Yeah. So now like Harry Potter feels like a Christmas thing. It was to like me. there was also like David Yates. There was a in like Alfonso Cuarón did one of them too. Like they did a bunch of different directors for all those. But yeah, you're absolutely right about that about time of year. Definitely for me for certain movies as well. Definitely matters. Yeah, dude. So yeah. all right, speaking of fake news because people were saying that that was fake news that the that the whole thing around the script or the budget was fake news. So there was this like headline going around the other day where apparently Isabella Merced was saying that the reason that uh, Madam Webb failed was because that uh, fan like men still have an abiding hatred of of strong women this has since been uh, there you go perfect <laughs> quote that we'll uh, we'll use that as a fake YouTube strong we'll, yes. i don't like women that think they're strong when they're like 85 pounds and they think they're strong uh, physically and mentally and emotionally and i'm like you're none of those things i don't like women I agree. <laughs> somebody, somebody clip that, please. Somebody clip that. I mean, it's always funny because it's like uh, when you watch the stunt scenes, you just see like, wow, that very, very like large man is very athletic to flip himself over like that when the woman is supposedly flipping She like him punches over. him and he's like, oh, his nine pack like hits her in the face and he's falling down. He weighs like 235 pounds. He's like, yeah. In punches. real life, her hand would just like bend. Bro, and I've been, I've been slapped. I've been punched by like girls, like as a joke, like at like a house party, like punch me as hard as you can. Uh, and it, you now don't get me wrong it like hurt because you know it, it punch, a little girl punched me as hard as she can but it like hurt and i was like oh and i start laughing i'm like oh that was well, funny the, the thing is like if if a woman punches you 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 will get a bruise if yeah. a man punches you in the face it's possible he could break your orbital yeah it's possible <laughs> that you're gonna be <laughs> yeah. in and out of hospitals for the next two years exactly if someone yeah if you get like an uh like a you know some dude just standing there and just like like you might end up with broken bones yeah. and you could, like it's possible that you could get hit so hard you fall down hit your head and die. Yeah. There, is, there are very few women that are going to do that to any man. You have to be a very very small man for a woman to come up to you and punch you in the face so hard that like she breaks your bones. Dude, people don't realize Phil that I've trained a lot of girls in the gym. Um and I've tra- I've trained girls for years that get stacked and they look on they're, they're big you know they look they look like they got a lot of muscle on them and they'll sit down to flat bench right after i pulled 402 for a couple reps mm-hmm. or 405 and the bar's bending them you know and these girls sit down huge girls and they can get a plate one time like that's the difference mm-hmm. is you know and it didn't even i've been doing over over 350 for five years now and it, i just it's just because i started focusing on bench and I, I talked to this girl last week and she you know she's one of those girls that she like focuses on bench does a plate and a 25 real strong girl and she's like the first time i went to the gym and i did like you know some bench and then i looked around and there was guys doing like three four plates all around me she's like i realized how different men and women are yeah totally <laughs> it's crazy totally. So she says, uh, blame, it says, blame the fans. Isabella Merced says, Madam Webb failed for one simple reason. For the same reason the Marvels or Birds of Prey have failed. Because the male audiences still hide a deep contempt for everything that is starring strong, independent women. This has been proven false, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah. So what happened was, she ended up releasing a statement. Well, I get that as much as a Twitter post is a statement, right? Yeah. It says, uh, I'm just existing and people are spreading fake quotes and believing them. I'm just With no existing. real source. <laughs> <laughs> we need lessons on media literacy. Literacy. I rolled my eyes at the words media literacy, but we can move past that. Uh, this is crazy. This, if I was an actor, I wouldn't even want to be involved in these franchises anymore because all sorts of shit's going to get thrown around that's got nothing to do with your job. Like, the only reason to do it now is that it's going to lead you to something more. But even, like, Leonardo DiCaprio's, like, 
don't do superheroes. Hey! See, what we'll do, we'll do a crossover episode one day, and we'll do Naked Snack with the dancing. I don't know what's happening, but yeah. <laughs> Crisis Party. Which Crisis you, uh, Party! Once you get so, a certain amount of... Uh, Super Chats. From oh, right. Yes. Yeah, All a right. Crisis meter underneath <laughs> you to watch. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I just always double check. So when I read this quote, because there was like a headline and everything, and there was like, it was pulled from an article, and I went to like looking for it, and one of the weirdest things about my job is like, I'm like obsessively looking on online for like where this could have come from. Yeah. And one of the easiest way to do that is like, if you do this job long enough, you start to like real, like recognize the headers and the logos and the, or in the structure of how all these websites set up their articles. Mm -hmm. And I didn't recognize where this one, you know, this website. So I had to go and start looking for it everywhere. And like two hours later, I'm like pulling my hair out. I'm like, does this thing exist or does this not exist? It's probably more like 45 minutes later, but it felt like two hours and I, I couldn't find it. So she released a statement. It is, it is not true. It's not true. Yeah, it was uh, unironically one of my tweets. <laughs> I re no, I, I read your, but you were like, there was a lot of people who yeah. like other people have made videos on, on this yeah. stuff. And, and I think it's, it just proves to, to us that like, it's very easy to just see this stuff and then just get caught up and then go forth. But uh, like when we have to have the actual article to back it up, it's like, I couldn't find it. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, the 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 real the real problem here is not if she said these things. The real problem is it is so easy to believe it at face Absolutely. value because every single movie that comes out, it's like men are afraid of strong women. And I'm like, dude, uh, so I wanted Sigourney Weaver to sit on my face when I saw Alien for the first time <laughs> when she was all sweaty and in those weird body tidies. I was like, bro, I'll peel those off, girl. What's up? <laughs> and I was, you know? I was telling you, I was like, look, there's like 30 years of television doing this even before movies did yeah. it with really really good female characters that are done really really well. Problem is. Most of the time today, they don't allow those female characters to be vulnerable in any sort of way. They don't. They, they're not allowed to have flaws. Yes. And also, they're not allowed to be objectified, which is also very important. Mm -hmm. So every single superhero, or I should say any male-led role, like at some point in the film, they're like taking a shower. They've been cut up. Freaking I robot. You know, he's got scar takes his shirt off. He got his abs out. Yep. A beautiful looking man. Everybody looks great. You see way more of that with men now than you do. With women. There needs yep. if you strong women need to be have 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 almost nothing on at some points and look how uh, like exhibit how good they look physically, how they're acting mentally, and all that in the movie. And like it it brings like a uh, like a. What is the? It's something the that word? it's it, you're, you're pointing to something that we talk about here. We will bring back aspirational, right? Like yeah. a guy yeah. that looks like he's in great shape. You want to aspire to be like that, hundred percent. And we should have a society that has aspirations, and we should hold people that achieve the things that we yeah. hold as aspirational. We should hold them yeah. in high regard, or in higher regard, and they should get credit and kudos and and that's what we should hold as the as something that people should strive for not everyone's going to achieve it people have different di limitations lives are different understood but we should aspire to greatness we should not yeah. aspire to mediocrity and we should definitely not be so cynical that we don't even try and that's what having like fat you know calvin klein models does it's like yeah. oh it's okay to look awful and it's okay to look to be unhealthy and it's okay to 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 reject yeah. uh, uh traditional beauty standards but traditional beauty standards are traditional beauty standards because we find them beautiful without being told to there's also a duality to that, that they there's don't another twenty dollar oh, so. uh go ahead uh cobra command derp pain hate suffering how can i further these things maybe it's time for the camel for the camelot to bask in the beauty glory and something <laughs> again this? get out of the way again with this dude. There's something in there. <laughs> the, of the uh, expression joke. of the pe oh the an artistic expression of the people's joker no no we did it on my show no nope, we've already done it it's we, terrible we've ar I made him watch it on his show <laughs> uh, listen I'm going to Los Angeles and I'm paying for our video I don't want to have to pay to make the people's joker go he's already too. seen it he's already seen it ladies and gentlemen uh, but Cobra Commander don't worry he had to suffer with everyone as well it, it did happen yeah. uh, but to my point what I was saying is there, there's a, a dual a duality to that which is that to the audience it can be seen as objectification certainly that's how women interpret those types of scenes right yes, but yes. to men uh, they may see it as as just aspirational beauty for like uh, as the type of women that they might be attracted to right sure fine but to the character it's about vulnerability 
So a lot of times, like you were saying, it's a scene where somebody's yeah. cut up and they're going to take a shower because yeah. they're healing. To show the scars of yes, battle. Yes, it's to about vulnerability that, yes. for them. So it holds dual meaning. And I think one to of the show the like cost of being yes. that tough guy and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And I think, for, but the same would hold true for women, right? There's, there's vulnerability there. And I think what's interesting is then the wires get crossed about who you're making the movie for because you're supposed to make the movie with the character in mind, not necessarily just the audience. So when you show that scene, the director should be thinking this is important because it shows the vulnerability of the character, yeah. not what the social implications are from a specific group of people that might yeah. interpret it differently. What does the director want that shot to yeah. be? Does the director want to show that person with no shirt on about to take a shower because they believe they're objectified? No, no, they're doing it because they're telling a story. Yeah, and, it, and it, it, you're totally right. And the way that, that it shot obviously matters and stuff. But, but to your point, like one of the, there was this great picture. I think it was Alex Ross that drew it. Uh, he, and he had, it was a picture of Batman and you you see this and he's got his shirt off or whatever and he's yeah. like like the cowl's laying down or whatever and his and his back is just literally just wrecked yeah. you can see all kinds of massive scars and and I think I was it was young when I, the first time I saw that or younger and I, I think that was like oh wow that's that's true like Batman would have that wouldn't he Batman yeah. like, that was the first time it dawned on me I was like wow you know it does cost something and it's something that as a you know as a young kid as a young person it it never made the the fact that Batman is vulnerable and Superman is not never clicked with me until I kind of saw that. Yeah. And I was like, oh. And then, you know, the, that's something that they talk about in the Batman versus Superman confrontations. They stuff. point wow. this out. Like, so the actor who played Oliver Queen in Arrow, Stephen Amell, he's like, he was shirtless in like every episode. It's yeah. the CW. All the stars are supposed to be hot young people, right? Yeah. That's the point. But the point is the actor loved the character so much. I think I've mentioned this in here before. He could tell you in story where each scar that they had to then apply makeup to create in every episode, he could tell you what scene caused that scar because it's part of the story. So cool. the, uh, the audience gets there, in this case, the women who are allowed to see um, aspirational men, whereas yeah. men are not allowed to see aspirational women, uh, they get their eye candy, but it, but it yeah. matters to the story. If you're going to be on screen, you're going to be objectified for those by those people that would objectify you for any reason. Mm -hmm. The issue is, is these women will make statements, and I say women like actresses, will make statements against the objectification of women and then they'll they'll agree with directors or uh like uh costume departments choices on wearing a giant completely covering everything like leather thing or leather jacket that is not form-fitting at all the entire movie and but then they'll go to an award show with a string bikini on yeah they were talking about that like, with I'm, adam webb and i'm so confused yeah movies, like they, uh, they they're like don't objectify me but i'm gonna go to an award show with literally my my freaking slobber pocket and my meat, my meat wallet on full display, and my giant boobies, even nipples, bro. I saw nipples, which is great, but I would like to see that in the movie instead. The, lo <laughs> the logic that you I, know? and I saw people arguing about this on, on Twitter uh, <laughs> about Madam Web. The, the logic that they were trying to impart was that they don't get a choice when making the movie, which is just pretending like they didn't have a choice to just not take the role. Yeah. I, right? Oh, God, I will. Right? Oh, it's so <laughs> infuriating. I Listen, I know. No, I don't even want to. I don't even want to. Don't. I don't want to. Okay. All right, guys. Let's uh, let's move on. Uh, Phil is going to love this one. Phil is absolutely going to love this one. Empire star with, uh, with almost $1 million judgment after saying it's immoral to tax descendants of slaves. Uh, I, well, it's immoral to tax anyone. I, I was going to say I agree. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what's immoral is to tax people that weren't slaves. What's and immoral? Because it's immoral. Yeah. To, it's I mean, it's immoral to tax people that were slaves. It's also immoral to tax people that weren't slaves. Like, it's immoral to tax. I'm telling you what. We went to war over a two percent tax on tea, bro. Yeah. And um, now my property taxes are eight grand a year. Oh God. They I were six hundred five years. What happened? Six hundred five years ago. Yeah. Well, it was it was I think it was a long time ago. Was, and my house a was that's a big change. My house was cheap, and then I bought a bigger house. And now, granted, it was only <clears throat> it's like worth double. So. Theoretically, it should be 1100 1500 but it was the first year. When you compare house when you compare house to dollars, the prices have gone up. When you compare house to house, the prices have not gone up. Yeah. It's, yeah they, it's, it, it's, they just haven't. It's crazy, but the, the property taxes are insane. Yes, and insane. then not only that, it's just every other tax that exists. And yeah, I think uh, I think we should abolish the IRS. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but Terrence Howard from Empire, he was also the original roadie in, in Iron Man, uh, he has like a $1 million judgment against him to pay in back taxes. 
Uh, and the judge comes after the IRS spent a year trying to collect 578000 in income taxes from Howard that have not been paid from between 2010 and 2019. Uh, he says, 400 years of forced labor and never receiving any compensation for it, oh. the actor said in the message, according to a court transcript. Now you have the gall to try and prosecute the charge taxes oh. to the descendants of a broken people that are responsible for causing the breakage. In, second, uh, in a second follow-up voice message, Howard said, in truth, the entire United States should, by default, become the property of the descendants of slaves. But since you do not have the ability or the courage to do it, let's try this in court. We're going to bring you down. It's a great defense. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's a great defense. I, I mean, the thing, well, I mean, it, okay, so he's he has to lose. Yeah. Because of the precedent that it was sent. Yeah. Uh, that it would set. There's no way that he's going to win. Yeah. Even if he's right on the issue and, and blah, 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 he cannot win because if he wins, that just the sets up. The precedent it sets. Is yeah, that, that just means the, that means the whole country ends up falling apart because people are going to start going to court. And even if only like a t 10% of the people actually win in court, you've got problems with like, uh, uh, you've got equal protection problems, blah, blah, blah. Bro, it's yeah. going to be a mess. It's gonna Dude, be a mess. I will be on uh, the freaking uh, 23 and me. I'm going to find out if I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who's this guy? I'm oh, his name. Sure. Jamal in 1897 was my great, great, great uh, right. uh, uncle. Yeah, bro, I'm not paying taxes. <laughs> I mean, we all know yeah. that, that net worth online is unreliable. Right, but right, right. Uh, he was making supposedly 175000 per episode. On um, on Empire, and he's worth over five million dollars. Yeah, so I mean, look. I do always love when the celebrities. Uh, now I will say, if only he would have just uh, got with the program with the MCU, it'd be worth way more right now. Oh yeah, I'm sure he regrets that every day. I'm sure Katie Holmes felt the same way about not playing uh, her character in the set in the Dark Knight after playing her in Batman Begins. I yeah. would have preferred if they brought back Katie Holmes. I like Katie Holmes a lot. Yeah, yep. and then yeah, that was back when they actually like showed chicks in like tight clothing too. So it would have been great. <laughs> so okay, I, I basically want to start a new segment here okay. called. Why don't we take, like, we need to take the celebrity microphones away. Stop letting yeah. these people do interviews. Dude. Bradley, yeah. Cooper, C Bradley Cooper is totally fine with being naked around the house. He used to shower with his dad, he says. Oh, my God. His dad was Biden? That's weird. Didn't we talk about him yesterday? No, uh, we talked like, about him and his, his daughter. But it's Bradley Cooper. It's same, yes, Brad Bradley Cooper. Yes. Uh, this is this is his statement. He says he's totally comfortable walking naked around the house because he used to shower with his daughter. And all I can think about is when you're doing this, don't you think in your head, like I'm constantly, when doing this show, I'm like, what is going to get clipped and taken out of context, right? Yeah. Like, how do you deliver that line, that yeah, whopper dude. of a line and not think like, man, every single media outlet's just going to run an insane headline bro, about this. Bro, like, what movie is he trying to get people to not go see? <laughs> He's, uh, he directed and starred in a movie called Maestro, which is about a, a composer, which he got into a lot of trouble for what's called Jew face. That's what they call it. They call it Jew face. Oh, yeah, because, because they just put a big old nose on the prosthetic there, nose on. There is, there's a $20 <laughs> super face. chat from Bill Dozer. Uh, dollar dollar bills, y'all. Great to see y'all bringing a gay retard on the show. <laughs> hail Camel Cast. Hail Cyber Frog. Bring back Bob's on screen. I like how it says uh, bring a gay redneck on the show. It feels like ah, oh, it's a gay retard. Uh, same thing. Oh my bad. Phil is basically basically like same thing. Freudian slip there. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> feels like I read this. I read this. It becomes this. Yeah, you know so that does funny. happen. I mean, it's true both ways. It doesn't matter. I can't get. Listen, if I tell you that I will be there on Thursday, I might show up on Tuesday and vice versa. I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> I'm that way with numbers. I mean, I'm bad at reading on air in general. People know this. Like, I remember there was like a comment early on, like, how can you host a podcast and not know how to read? <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that's me too. Dude, I grew up in the trailer park. We didn't that's, read. That's, that is me too. <sighs> so, so he says this, but it wasn't just him who had a comment like this. He <laughs> says, by the way, uh, he says, not with my mom, but with my dad. My dad was always nude and I always took showers with him. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, look, this is what happened with this is the this is the problem with celebrities, man. <laughs> celebrities were like celebrities, right? Celebrities were celebrities. Yeah. And now the, with the advent of Twitter, now we hate them because they're all insane. Yeah. Dude, I remember I was like probably 11 or 12. And I like was walking around the house and I went. To, I was looking for something. I went in my mom and dad's rep bedroom, which felt weirdly sacred, and I don't like going in there. And then I was like knocking on the uh, the door, and I didn't think anybody's in the bathroom. And I opened the bathroom door, and my dad just turned around, and I was like, oh! and it, like, <laughs> dude, like you know, like, and I, I it like was I thought, dude, I see it in my like freaking in like the darkest 
points of my life when I'm laying there in bed, I'll see that image. Mm. And I've not, I've never, it's still, it, that still was there. one time. Still there. And these celebrities are like putting their junk <laughs> in their daughter's faces. Cause you know, she's like that tall when they're having a shower. <laughs> God. There's a $20 one there from Boosted Yogi. Boosted Yogi says, in honor of Women's History Month, I'd like to take a moment to recognize the men that allow it to happen. <laughs> boys, 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 that boys. Is boys. That Today is true. Today is the beginning of Women's History Month. Is it? Yes, absolutely. Nice. March yeah. 1st. We no, gave it to him. Is today March 1st? Yep. Oh, I thought, okay, yeah, today's Yes, March no, because yesterday was uh, was <clears> leave <throat> day. Yeah, so, yeah, you're, you're welcome, ladies, as, the, as they say. We give everything to them. They don't but realize it. Here's the thing, guys. It's not just Bradley <laughs> Cooper today. It's not just Bradley Cooper. Uh, Drew Barrymore loves going commando. Beware pranking daughter. Can you please just stop talking? Just please Please stop talking. Says uh, Bar uh, Drew Barrymore's all for leaving the underwear in the dresser drawer, but oh she says she's got to keep her head on a swivel because her daughter's got a penchant for pantsing. Oh my God. How old's her daughter? I don't know. Man, I'm, look, the most two traumatic points of my childhood are based around this. I was, it was like 3 a.m. and I was sitting there in bed and my ex-girlfriend from 100 years ago, her mom made me some fudge and I was sitting on my guitar amp. I had an old uh, PB6505 Plus sitting there. I had a great amp. And um, the fudge, still man. Great amp. Yeah, it's still great. Um, the fudge was sitting there, and I roll over at 3 a.m. in the pitch blackness, and my, my mom was standing there butt naked eating my fucking fudge. And I was like, you know, I was out of it. So I was like, Mom? And then she looks at me and just fucking skitters off like a roach. You have just told two stories about <laughs> your parents that's the that have ones. been incredibly enlightening. <laughs> that's, the, that's the two. That's Explains the two. Ones. A lot. Yeah. That's Explains the two ones, man. I get it now. She I skittered. <laughs> no, like a spider. I'll, I'll you, I, <laughs> you know, she didn't say shit. She looked at me and she was like, <laughs> like she was like sleepwalking or something. <laughs> Oh my god, that's great. <laughs> she like climbed in the wall. <laughs> Technically, we should be taking his mic away now, too, but we're just going to let it go. Hell that's no, fine. you hear those that's stories? Fine. I want more. There you go. That, that is perfectly fine. All right. Uh, I, we're going to have cringe today as well. We're going to have cringe and cute of the day. But I do have a white pill today. This might get us copyrighted, but here is Tenacious D singing <gasps> Hit Me Baby one more time. Really? No? Any, any Tenacious Let's D go. fans here? Love Tenacious Let's D. Go. Yeah, here go. we go. My loneliness is killing me. I want the shirt he's wearing. All right. I think Jack's I mean, I like the, he's like the last wholesome guy that exists. Kind of, there, there's this meme that was going around recently where it says like Jack Black looks like his son is walking him to school because <laughs> of the way he dresses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he is a wholesome dude. I'm worried though. Like I'm worried there's that time's going to come where he's going to release that like video and he's going to be like, I, cause he's going to appear in some movie and he's like, if any racist out there have a problem, I'm be like, no, Jack, please. Fuck. Yep. All I'm right. waiting for it. I'm scared. Ewan McGregor did it with freaking Obi Wan. I was like, no, Ewan McGregor. I mean, he was already doing it with uh, like when he was doing um, Birds of Prey press tour. He was annoying on the Birds yeah. of Prey press tour and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, it's like this the boogeyman. It's like if all of these people that don't actually exist because it's all like fake. Yeah. Like, uh, don't watch our show. I'm like, oh god. I was, and now I'm not gonna watch it. There is, uh, there is more Hollywood degeneracy going on. Phil actually redrew my attention to this story right before the show, which I completely forgot about because I read about it yesterday. I am a degeneracy fan, yes. so. So this says, Elizabeth Hurley makes out with woman in raunchy movie yeah. that her son Damien directed. Yeah. More. More snakes. So please. listen, she I'm is gonna give, smoking I'm, I am going hot, to give, and she's I will give, always been smoking hot. I will give uh, Mary's look of disapproval for her since she is not here today. It is look weird of to have your kid direct a sex scene with another woman. That is weird. Yeah. Elizabeth Hurley appears in raunchy scenes in her son Damien's movie, Strictly Confidential, and viewers are slamming it as perverse. I have a bunch of questions about this, yet perverse. I don't want to know the answer to any of them. I Here's don't understand one question. slamming it as perverse. What does that mean? Why is Elizabeth Hurley's son directing his mother's sex scenes? This is extremely creepy and disturbing. Yeah. Yes. That is. That part of it, yeah. Yep. That's weird. Mary Mary would approve of our reaction. Yes. Yes. Right there. Right? Uh, yep. Elizabeth Hurley, 58. 58. Gotcha. Uh, and her son is 21 with American businessman Steve Bing. Oh, you don't let a 21-year-old man in charge of anything. No. no. That's a private. 
Like, he doesn't get, <laughs> you don't get to do anything. Even, like, if you're an officer at 21, like, you get out of, ba- like, yeah. out of school early, they put an old guy around you as the, the first sergeant, and actually, he's really in charge. Yeah. He's the one yeah. that's going to make sure you don't drive your, you know, your unit into the ditch or whatever. Yeah. All right. Uh, got we got a $20, $20 one there. Uh, Francisco Sanchez Jr. says, on this, the first day of Women's History Month, let's hear it for the boys, men, who build the things women occupy. Boys, 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 boys. Oh, God, it reminds me of that one song by that lady, I can't remember her name, but it's like her one big hit back in the 80s. It's like, let's hear it for the boys. Oh, yes. Um, I don't remember. Let's hear it for the that... man. Who sang that? Oh. God, great song. Not, she- not Sheila E. Um. Bless her. I forget. Anyways, we got chat? it. We got, a, we got chat, another one. Just chat now. <laughs> yeah, let's, who sings the Let's Hear It for the Boys, first of all? Second of all, Cobra Command Derp is back with a second uh, $20 super chat. He says, to be fair, how often do you get a chance to say, more tongue, mom? Oh that is God. all. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, mm. if it's me and I'm watching the son directing the scene, then I'm like, all right, I can take my pants off. But if I'm the son, that's weird. They're saying it was Sheena Easton. Yeah, that that sounds right. So what's what's worse, uh, degeneracy or nepotistic de- degeneracy? Is nepotistic a word? I've just made yes. that up. Uh, nepotistic degeneracy is worse somehow than just regular nepotism. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like I feel like nepotism is worse than degeneracy. <laughs> I think the the POV I see it from a stepmom energy though. There you go. And I do that. I still think about it. my mom and dad are still together. Shame on them. Because like, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I never got the opportunity. You know, my dad's a good looking man. He's yeah, strong. My, my dad died before he got the chance to divorce my wife. <sighs> yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> like, my mom. My, my dad would have been. Well, we, hold up. Up. we got a, uh, a 49.99. I just, I just totally switched to Mary. Like, Mary, Mary, the soul of Mary is disapproving of this whole thing. Uh, right? Yeah, she absolutely is. <laughs> I, uh, 49.99 uh, super chat from St. Miles. I snorted my iced tea. Take my money, guys. <laughs> I just, okay, so I and just. Hold thought- on, there's another. There's a, there's a G dash. G dash has a twenty dollar one. Sorry, Cody, your car wrap lost the Twitter. It poll. did. I saw that. We're gonna talk about it more in in, in that segment. I'm so but, okay, so this. I just saw the other day. I saw a product you can buy called Take a Bump, and it's just like it's just caffeine you can snort. And I'm like, what the fuck is the? Dude, I need that. I need that because I can't do anything else because of a drug test. Uh, imagine like you're a, all, no. imagine no. you're a no. cop it's and sad. like somebody <laughs> like you pull someone over and they've got like a product called take a bump in their in their thing and you're like officer it's it's clearly just caffeine. It says Nestle on it. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally it's fine. It's just caffeine. It's a direct injection. But Not it was uh, it's. Hold on, I'm just double checking there. Got to fix. Whenever we, whenever the show moves like this, then the super chats get out of hand. Okay, so yeah, so you can just buy a product called Take a Bump Now, where you can just snort caffeine. Yeah, why would you want to do that? I'm a, what do you mean? All the work, none do? of uh, all the uncomfortableness, none of the fun. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> no, it's not uncomfortable. It's great. It's it's, it's, great. <laughs> it's great when when it's happening, when there's actually an effect after the afterwards. But if you're just doing it to oh, no effect, that would just yeah, be yeah, stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're saying the, the face numb, throat numb. That's great. Yeah. No, yeah, no, I agree. So <laughs> just uh, uh, just saying what I'm saying here. This this movie. If you guys want to check this out, Elizabeth Hurley is uh, starring in this movie, directed she's by her son. So pretty. Yep. Just so pretty. Yeah. Yep. That's what I wish my stepmom would look like if I had one. <laughs> I, I never, you know how every boy has that story when they were like 14, like, oh, my stepsister, stepmom sat on my face. No, that was, I never got that. that, that was, first I of all, not every that. boy has that story because there's they still plenty do. of kids. Well, that I don't have, I don't, I don't have a stepmom or stepsister, yes. so yeah. Or like, a, okay, so I have a tiny story. It's like 10 seconds. Um, and it's almost like that, but I was too young. I was like 11, and my sister had a friend. Her name was Kyla, and she came over to our trailer. And at like 2 a.m., she like walks into my bedroom. I'm like 11. She's like 13 or 14. And she just gets in bed with me and she's like snuggling me. And like, I'm just watching Tom and Jerry. And I'm like, man, if I was like two years older, you had no dude, I'd have been like, bro, <laughs> let's it's go. Pro- it's probably better that that didn't happen. No. <laughs> <laughs> Disagree entirely. It's probably more illegal. <laughs> there was a law being broke somewhere. There. Yeah, dude. Was, I think about it a lot. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think about it all the time, man. It was hot. All right. Cringe or cute of the day? I think the story was cute. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) 
What would you like to see cringe or cute of the day? That story was cute. What would you like to see cringe or cute of the day? <laughs> cringe all day. Come all on. right, let's go cringe first. Uh, let's let's see what we've got here. I've got several actually. Uh, the cringe has been piling up lately. I saw Ashley Sinclair post this earlier today. It says, uh, guys, I found the TikTok NPC streamers in the wild in Miami. Here they are. I'm the first AI in the world. We were to say, we were gonna take like a vote on like how long it'll take for the song to get old for us where we'll stop dancing when it's done. Okay, never, so never. Uh I like that this guy has it like <laughs> it's like tied to a pole to get the I mean game. very low effort. But then again, Rosa, Rosa. I can't believe. I mean, uh, there's not many people I want to. He's got a ring light there. There's not many people I want to like slap around. Yeah. Maybe Hassan Parker, maybe. I mean, probably. But God, I hate I hate these people. How did you feel? <laughs> uh, you had a lot to say about the. Um, actually, no. You you he had one of my favorite comments. Uh, you had one of my favorite tweets that I've read in a very long time, where you said social battery is something women use as an excuse to not be mean or to be mean to their family members. And ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> say, social dude, I, battery is dude. something women use as an excuse to be mean to their family. A hundred percent. That dude. is awesome. They invented that shit. No, women in the last ten years have invented uh, uh, mental health days. That's their day where they get to eat ice cream and watch like Bridgerton, like where there's like a black prince for some reason in the 1700s. And then they uh, they uh, they have the other one, which is the social battery. And what that is is they it's a it's a, a phrase invented by women to absolve them of any accountability and responsibility to their family and friends. We can't do that as men. You can't just be like, ah, sorry, bandmates, uh, I got to take a mental health day. They're like, no, you get your screaming ass up here and scream. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> we got a thing we got to do. We've for got them. work to do. Yeah, we yeah. paid. Uh, but we, women can do that all day, all day, every day. Well, we're gonna, and we're going to actually, the funny thing is we're going to be getting into it because it kind of goes, it is, uh, it's fueled by women, but we're going to talk about that in one of these topics today. But I've got one more cringe of the day. The, the influencers must be stopped, ladies and gentlemen. The influencers must be stopped. Twitch streamer kicked out of Office Depot after bringing whole setup to the store. <laughs> this based. Is, <laughs> so here it is. It's kind of based. So, <laughs> here we go. I kind of think it's hilarious. What? You can't videotape in the store. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Because we literally we said so, homie. Like, like this isn't a place where you can. That works, right? Yes. Can I? Can I just you finish cannot. this? No, you cannot. You gotta pack up. You cannot be here. Diddy donated one dollar. Come get me, Dad. Ask. See what your system looks like. Yeah, this I gotta set it up just to test it out. No, you're not testing it out in the store. I mean, it's I not a public place, let's be honest. Can't run and video. Oh, I can't run? He's videoing over here, and no, you, you're going to have to go. Hintler donated one dollar. This black nigga is stroking his cock. Right now. Chat's saying, like, oh, man. He's like, chat's saying, like, oh, be a w -man. bro, I'm don't you know chat right is now. saying. I, I've given Wait, you the option. Okay, okay, okay. We're done. Nope. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm sorry, but if you're just this old manager at an office depot, the last thing you want to have to deal with is this dude pretending like he doesn't God, know I'd what the it. problem is. I mean, you totally should go and just mess the stream up. What do you? I mean, what you should have done is like, like a, I'll cut you in on the super chats that come. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah right. Please, listen. <laughs> Let me stream listen, for an hour. I'll cut only, you in on what on what comes through. You can only stay if I get all the super chats. That's However he, much that's you get on super chats, do. I'm taking. That's what he should have done. That's right. There's just there's this weird new movement of like kids on Twitch or Kick or whatever. And they have to do the most like illegal, like annoying stuff possible to try to get famous, and it freaking works, man. Yeah. Well, that's because it's it's showing they're ballsy, but it's also yeah. because they're not creative. Like when you're yeah. just trying to think of a way to like break the law and see what you can get away with, it's not hard to figure out ways to break the law. There's plenty of laws to break, you know. And and when you're essentially like you're like I'm just gonna go and annoy people. You know, it's like that's there's a million ways to be yeah. obnoxious in public. And they're never know? like like you said, like that they're they're not creative. They don't no. really ever have personalities. They're not funny. They're just the same kid. It's like bruh lit. Bruh fam. And I've got like the day and yeah, you're right. And they have just have the balls to to be obnoxious. That's it. Yep. You know. <clears throat> 
All right. Uh, it's, it's even worse, like the prank YouTubers. That's even worse because yeah. the pranks aren't even pranks anymore. They're just being mean to people. Yep. I had the, like I saw there are dudes rolling around New York now that like literally run up behind people and grab their grab them by the head and try and give them like a bulldog. Yeah. I don't know if you know. Bulldog was a wrestling yes. where you grab the head. And you just, no one will ever like, do that to me. Like I like sincerely, like I don't I don't go to New York and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. I don't yeah. hang out there. Like I, I avoid the like uh, the absolute hell out of the city now. But uh, but yeah, I mean, that ain't. That's not okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like you, uh, dude, and I say it all the time because I'll, I'll have, I'll hear from girls I'm training or girls I'm hanging out with or guys I'm hanging out with, um, and they're like, "Yeah, this dude said this or this, uh, this dude said this to me today, like on a bus or on a train or at the gym <clears throat> or at Walmart." It's like this dude came up to me and said this thing. I'm like, no one ever does that to me. No. Wait, somebody. No uh, one ever does that. No one. Please. Like, like no, no one ends up. No one ends up and like no one comes into my uh, like my DMs and making threats and stuff. I feel like that's all. Like women get that because they're you know they're women. Yeah. Like so. and they, they. I mean, in real life, they really can't fight back for yeah. this a physical altercation. I could. It'd in be the great. chat, Chili says the milk crate challenge is directly from Ethiopia mating ritual. A man must walk on the back of cows, and if he falls, cannot have a woman for four years. Remember the milk crate challenge. Yes. That was a whole moment in time. That's really a I thing. I remember that. I, I do remember that. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a great one where it's like when you're when like the cop is pulling you over for a DUI check and he pulls out the milk crates. <laughs> you do. <doomed>. Oh <laughs> doomed. no. You're going to jail. <laughs> oh no. Can't have a, a, a woman for four years. Dude, All I right. saw videos of a dude eating a cow's ass one time. Oh yep. boy. You know. Yep. So like that's he's don't need a woman there. <laughs> <laughs> You seen it? It's like a sacred I thing. I seen it. <laughs> seen it all over Twitter. I had never seen that ever. <laughs> all right, uh, we got Q to the day as well, ladies and Thank gentlemen. God. A little bit of a, a little bit of a reprieve here. Thank this God. one here from uh, Cookie says, "R.I.P. to our family cat. My Aww. grandfather adopted her over 15 years ago. Damn, damn, that is a cute looking cat right there. What drag." Oh uh, wait, hey, it's got a little, it's got a little boss up. Uh, I mean, after <laughs> B Bucko, uh, when Bucko had uh, surgery, he had the the leg shaved yeah. down there, and I always felt horrible for Sucks. him having Poor to guy. look around without cute, walk around without it. But let's do a couple more here. This one is from Sirius Aurelius. Says uh, this is my golden retriever look Charlie, who just boy. passed away this morning. Why? Uh, why? What? Stop! Stop it, dying! Look, Pat. Stop sending these as cue to the day. Rest in peace. This is like, this is Jesus. sad of the day. Yeah, sad this is supposed to be. Hell. This is this always comes after cringe. This is supposed to uplift. We're gonna God. have to go through all this of them until we find boy. one where the pet has. It's, that was. He, uh, like, why don't you just send like Sarah McLachlan songs too? Like in the arms of the angel. I would play it for copyrighted. For okay? Isn't this copyrighted? <laughs> all right. Uh, this was not meant to be so depressing. Let's do one more here, please. Okay, check out this deer. There you go. Okay, the deer is like uh, it'd be funny. Like we go to the next. The next gets picture, the deer's car. got a, an arrow sticking out of it. <laughs> He's got stage four super cancer. It's like, oh god, <laughs> his face is gonna fall off. No. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> fine then, guys. Let's go ahead and get started then, since we're uh, we're already off the rockers here. The show is so off the rails. I the love show's it. Uh, great. All right, let's go ahead and get started. And I want to talk about the fact that Hollywood is in crisis, ladies and gentlemen. Everything is going wrong out there these days. Is. Right now, what we're finding out is that despite all of the promises Hollywood has made uh, to the demographics gods, because that seems to be who they worship these days, there are less women in movies now than there have been in the last 10 years, which is really hard to believe when you think about it. But it says women-led films fell close to 30% in 2023, which feels insane. Right? But movies and TV are different. It is fair yeah. to point out that TV is where they bog you down with just endless shows that nobody watches. The last couple of days, I've tried to like... So I, I actually started watching something on Roku TV. Normally, everyone here who watches the shows knows that I, I don't watch ads. I'm anti-ad in all respects. But Roku only gives me like three ads per 45-minute episode. And they're only 23... Like They're only like 25 seconds long. I can yeah. handle that. But like those channels, just when you go look through all the streaming channels, there's just so much stuff being made that there are a lot of shows that are led by women. And that's fine. If nobody's watching them, then the show should get canceled and you should live and die on whether the show actually does well or not. But movies are different. Movies are supposedly supposed to be a bigger investment with a larger return if it's done right. So perhaps they're a little bit worried to put these movies in the hands of people they don't feel can actually bring home a return. 
most people would argue, I believe, that they care more about the ideology these days yeah. than they do well, about returning a profit yeah. on things. Uh, <laughs> and they keep lauding Barbie as the, as like the hero of last year's box office without pointing out that Super Mario Brothers also made a billion dollars yep. and Oppenheimer also almost yep. made a million dollars. And, and what's, what's more important about all this <laughs> is the reason Barbie was so successful is because women want to watch other women being feminine, paint yep. cute things. That's very, very important. And also it did better out of any other female led movie and that's because women aren't going to go see a movie about a, a female character being a male character being a masculine character um they want to see women being women and men want to see men being women men and also women want to see men being men that, that's a huge right. part so of like yep. everybody wants it and the people that are angry about it aren't the demographic that are going to see it anyway yeah you know? what, what they always they, they're really good at shifting the narrative on these stories and saying that men didn't come out to the movie while also not pointing out that women didn't come out to the movies either women want to see look i'm gonna be straightforward with you Women want to see attractive women, regardless of what they say. The only ones saying opposite are fat women in their 30s. And men want to see attractive women. But men also want to see attractive men. And women want to see attractive men. men and masculine want, men. Because men are aspirational and they yeah. want to see, like, look, I, I wish I could look like Bro, that guy. I want to look hurt. at that guy. Every time I see freaking Alan Rickson, when I watch Alan's, Reacher, yep. takes his shirt off, I'm like, fuck, I need to, I need to cut. <laughs> yeah. I need to cut right now. Like, why am I not at the gym? I could I could totally be watching this on the treadmill. Yeah. Why am I not at the gym right now? I am so horrible. I've let everyone down. I'm going to the gym right now, and I'm going to finish watching this. Dude, on I'm on the deep web. I'm like, all right, let's trim. <laughs> I, okay, I need some trim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about gear here, man. Bro, but, how uh, much can I get? Like, Please so, put it everywhere. But it's true. It's so true. It says, like, it's a difficult <laughs> lesson to be re uh, restated. One film does not represent progress across the industry and cannot bear the burden of lifting the industry to inclusion. Again, you're leaving out Super Mario Brothers, which was Chris Pratt. Yeah. You're leaving out Oppenheimer, which was Killian Murphy. There was a lot of things that succeeded last year, not just Barbie. Very good point about Oppenheimer. Old chick was naked in it a, lot, a lot of the movies. There you Bro, I, I actually felt like that was one of those ones. Where, first of all, Florence Pugh just she's annoying. So but she whatever. is, and her body's weird looking. That's whatever. Like, but it was that. there. People got mad. People got mad. I was, was like, I was like, was, it, it, she looks weird. She looks floopy as weird, hell. She looks a little floopy. Yep. Got a little floopy here. Yep. But like, I can deal with the floop as long as it's there. Give me something. The findings are awful, wrote Neff, Doctor Smith, <clears throat> and Doctor uh, Catherine Piper. Despite posturing, the legacy studios have dealt little or reversed course on inclusion in popular films. The stress that one film, even the year's biggest, cannot make up for the relative dearth of representation of the offerings. The problem is, is like when you focus on demographics, you forget that that's just a distraction and that nobody goes and sees a movie for demographic reasons. We were at, at uh, Dune last night and Zendaya's in that movie. Rebecca Ferguson is in that movie and they're both, uh, okay. Rebecca Ferguson is fantastic. Zendaya was fine. I, I wouldn't call that performance fantastic, but there are, and Florence Pugh is in that movie. And at no point when I was I watching that movie, did I feel like none of these women were like deserved to be there because they are kind of the, the A-listers of today. Florence Pugh, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson. That's your upper echelon of Hollywood actresses right now. And they did fine and they did good and it had nothing to do with the demographics of the movie because the story and the visual storytelling came first the problem is it's very hard to make art when you have the pronoun police and the gender yeah. police behind you with a gun saying like change this change this change this do it this way do it this way it doesn't work and it's really really depressing like imagine having to be an artist in today's climate trying to make art when this is going on. Well, they they, they, they probably submit f first screenings or like some kind of raw data. Yeah. And the people that are in charge of whatever DEI or ESG, whatever you have you, they're like, oh yeah, this isn't proof. There's yeah. not enough. There needs to be like a gay kiss somewhere in this. Um, <laughs> like, why is there no minority actors? We need this and this. And they're like, well, fuck, we have to spend a hundred million dollars doing reshoots now. Yeah. The results this year point to an industry growth apathetic about efforts surrounding diversity and inclusion. Good. There shouldn't be. You should just hire the best people for the job. Though I've been told that meritocracy is now a, a, an evil word. It is. You're I mean, so th this stuff is, it's annoying in film, right? Mm. It's its annoying and stupid in entertainment. Um, but the, the real problem with this stuff is when it ends up in places like the medical field. And right now, there's, uh, I think it's Stanford uh, Medical School in California is having 
significant problems or it's come out that there are significant problems in the way that people are getting their grades and people mm -hmm. are, that are getting admitted that's where these kind of DEI stuff yeah. really become a problem. So the people that were complaining about this five, 10 years ago, this stuff in movies, what they were complaining about was this isn't going to stop. It's not just that movies are, are, you know, we have to look at these things, blah, 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 and, or we have to see this and, and, and stories feel forced and they don't feel natural and it, storytelling is getting worse because the stories don't reflect what we kind of see in reality and and we don't the the narratives that were that were essentially people are kind of looking for narratives in movies yeah. when they go to a story they're looking to hear the story that that's kind of already pre you know they, they imagined and if it's if it surprises them they're happy but if it's too surprising and different then they don't like it and yeah. and that's fair and stuff but this stuff going into movies and into other things in society, it was only a matter of time until it gets into things that really, really, really matter, like doctors, like prescribing medicine. So the, the airplane I, pilots. Oh yeah, airplane pilots. Yeah. Building, you know, building inspectors, people that are engineers, all those kind of things. People talk about the crisis of competency and the things that we're seeing in the entertainment industry, while only entertainment and not really impactful on normal lives, that's the canary in the coal mine. Mm -hmm. So the fact that movies and stuff are not entertaining the way they used to be and, and there's not really creative ideas and stuff, those same symptoms are gonna start popping up more and more in different places in society and some of the places that they're gonna pop up are gonna actually result in deaths. Yeah. And this is the yeah. this is the exact reason against having uh, political correctness to the point where you're not allowed to step on a line and have, have dissenting ideas because you end up with a monoculture that eventually starts killing human beings. And and the 21st century is evidence of that. Sorry for getting oh, yeah. too The oh, yeah. thing that I find funny about it is like, so what I've learned more than anything is that Hollywood is very, very sensitive to how they're perceived, which is interesting because uh, for instance, after uh, after the what happened to George Floyd, they all made all these pledges and they do this kind of every couple of years where they pledge to make all these changes. But when you try to force change through guilt, yeah. it doesn't work when you do so with a corporation. Now, we talk a lot of times on here about bringing back shame. Like a lot of people, I'm not one that's uh, necessarily buys that that will ever work again because I just feel like most people these days, a lot of people, especially people who want to get famous on social media, they just don't have uh, any I mean, that, aspect of shame. A lot of that has to do with the upbringing, right? but go ahead. Exactly. But but the point is, is that when you try to shame a corporation, it's not a recipe for sincerity. Mm -hmm. So they will retract. They'll do what they have to do for as long as they can to make you forget that the problem is there. And then they will immediately revert course back to what was working. Yeah. Now, they're willing to make all the changes in the world on television where there is no money to be made because every single streaming platform loses money every year. So there's a twenty dollar uh, super chat here from Salty Bag of Nuts. Phil, when are we going to see a Tom McDonald and All That Remains collaboration? Also, I have libtards as coworkers that love your music. Should I tell them about your opinions, lol? No. Uh, well, <laughs> to be, so I don't. I don't foresee uh, an All That Remains Tom McDonald collaboration. Um, Tom McDonald is a rapper, and All That Remains is a metal band. Um, but. Uh, yeah, so I don't see that happening. Um, and also, I, you have a libtard as a coworker that love it. Like, All That Remains has people that you, like, there are people in All That Remains that have political opinions that you would detest. There are people in All That Remains that if you found out their political opinions, you would hate me for associating with them. Right? If this matters to you, if, if your libtard friends, if, they're, if they're, their opinion, if you think that their opinion is going to change because of my, opi my political opinions and that kind of stuff matters to you, you would definitely hate me for the people that I associate with. So, so that All That Remains is not a political band. I'm political. The band does not have po politics, and there are people in All That Remains that strongly disagree with me. So just, yeah. just so you know, the band isn't me, even though, like, it's my band and stuff. I don't, like, I'm not, I'm the dude that wants to bring people back together. Like, I talk about, like, we, we want to get the liberals away from the commies. The commies have tricked the liberals. We want to get the liberals, Democrats, back to being liberal and stuff. I'm doing that in my band. <laughs> I'm, like, I don't treat the people that disagree with me as if they're, like, my enemies, so... What, one of the other things that they talk about in these <clears throat> is, uh, and both sides, I think, readily admit this, that uh, they do seem to care whether uh, a certain gender or race is playing a protagonist or an antagonist, a good guy yeah. or a bad guy, which I always mm -hmm. find really interesting because, to me, 
a good bad guy is far more interesting most of the time than a protagonist because they're willing they're allowed to kind of go beyond what is acceptable for a good guy character when yeah. you have a good bad guy like Lex Luthor yep. it doesn't matter that you have a horrible good guy like Superman yeah because Superman is a, and the reason Superman's a horrible good guy is because he's boring as, as hell because he's invincible so, so what yeah. they're talking about here is that there, there, there aren't enough women as protagonists uh, and I, I don't know if I buy that I, I see a lot of cap there because I just don't see them putting a lot of like female antagonists are pretty rare in the big budget movies yeah. and the ones that do it well can do it very very well that's fine but an actor who gets a chance to play a really good bad guy every actor has always said they love playing bad guys because it's not who they are in real life so they love to be able to chew the scenery and play that character that's evil Right? They mm -hmm. are tacitly admitting that they want to draw uh, your attention to these things and make it think as if, okay, so it's a good guy in the movie, therefore they're a good guy in real life. That's not how the world works. Everyone yeah. who's watching these movies, everyone who's not poisoned by identity politics doesn't make these comparisons the way that people that have been ideologically captured do. Yeah, and <clears throat> you'll find these people telling on themselves a lot, right? <clears throat> so the guy that uh, does Doctor Who, or did it for a long time, and I think he's still doing Russell it. Russell T. Davies? Yeah. yeah. So he... Uh, he had this issue where he didn't want the new Doctor Who um, episodes to have Davros in a wheelchair, because oh, I I don't I don't want yeah. uh, I don't want people seeing wheelchair people as evil or disabled people as evil. And I'm like, no one saw that Nobody until you said that. Nobody in the history of world in the of the world has ever thought that. Yeah, it, except for him, meaning that he's telling on himself a little bit there. I, and I feel like that's what we run into a lot is you'll have you'll have antagonist um, women being antagonists is extremely believable because we've all met women in our life that are. Uh, they're cunning, uh, conniving, yep. and uh, the lack of a better word, evil as hell. So them being on screen and uh, occupying that space is a very believable and a good and immersive thing. But they can't put women in those roles anymore because they have they can't have flaws in movies. That, anymore. Yeah, that's the thing that the, the, you know? I was going to say. Like the the believability of of stuff is lost because you can't have characters that have done anything wrong. Like you were talking about a guy in a wheelchair. It's not that it's not that oh you're going to think all people in wheelchairs are bad. What he's actually trying to get the narrative to be is no one in a wheelchair would ever do this. Yeah. That's yeah. what he wants. That's like if you, if it's like, oh, he's at, he's in a wheelchair, and so it's possible that a person in a wheelchair would do this. And what he really wants is, oh, I don't want the, the people that are in wheelchairs have their lives hard enough, so you should not be planting the idea that they might actually be bad people as well. Right. You know. Exactly. Exactly. So. Yep. I just, I, I see all this stuff and the, the worst part is every time you read an article like this and some activist writes it, it's, there's always more work to do because when you pander yeah. to them, there will never be an end to this. Uh, yeah. it, there was a, an article, I saw, or, uh, I saw a uh, image that Valiant Renegade posted on Twitter the other day of like the 2024 lineup for Disney's like workshop writers and it's like four to one female to male ratio. Yeah. That's, it's not enough guys. They no. will not be happy until that is an all female it like well yeah. i mean justice uh justice ginberg ginsburg said this before she died someone asked when will it be fair when will it be back to even or whatever and she it's not when the court is 50 50. it's when the court's 100 percent women for 200 years that's when it will be even and yeah. that's the that's the mindset it's it's like oh well it'll be even you know men and women will be even when women have oppressed men for a hundred thousand years and, and yeah. when women have been able to, you know, beat the crap out of men because of all the bad things that men have done for the past 100,000 years since since humans became humans will be evil or will be equal in 100,000 years if women take all the positions of power right now and society makes it another thousand years. But <laughs> surprise, if you put women in charge, society ain't making it a thousand years. Yeah. Yeah. It's because they well, the, the, the most evident truth to this that no one likes to admit for some reason is the women still need men as the enforcement arm. So, like, when if you put women in power, like, they would still need men to be the enforcement arm of laws, and then if men get fed up enough, they're like, they'll just literally be like, okay, you're done now. For, and it's over. <laughs> for now. First of the for now. Yeah. And second of all, so, and the second thing on that is, like, there's a lot of, like, the 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 reason, I saw this chart the other day about, about who's voting Democrat, and, like, single women. Yeah that are, are, yeah, single women are voting Democrat and they vote like 68% Democrat. Married women, men, and uh, yeah, unmar married, unmarried. unmarried men and married men and married women all vote conservative because 
women that are single, if whether they have whether they do it intentionally or not, what they're doing is they're replacing men or the the things that men provide or a man would provide. They're replacing it with the government. The only yeah. reason yeah. women vote like that is because they're like, oh, I can get these things. These the the things that historically women have gotten from men, I can from one man. I can actually just get it from society, from the government, and then it's not actually getting it from one man. So. Yeah. Uh, and if you're looking for uh, <laughs> which studio is apparently the most based, it's Lionsgate, with only twenty percent of their roles going to lead roles going to women. So Good. apparently they're uh, Good. they're very uh, they're very <laughs> um, sexist over there. It's it says Walt Disney Pictures forty six point one percent leads go to women. Jesus. Paramount, 44, Warner Brothers, 38, Universal, 21. Again, as people said, remember who the biggest earner at the box office was last year? It was Universal Pictures, out, uh, outshone Disney for the first time since 2015. Are, is there a correlation there? I can't say for sure. Make up your own mind. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't have a problem with uh, female-led roles at all, and I, I don't, actually, as long as they're written well, And but they're not. Yeah. Uh, they're always written so terrible, and for some reason, they always have to put the dialogue in there that you know well not for men right it's there's there's always that dialogue somewhere in every movie and sometimes it, it takes course over the entire movie but sometimes it's like jarring for example like batman the one with robert pattinson the batman which i enjoyed I didn't um see it. you know i didn't enjoy the last 45 minutes that felt like uh, like it didn't need to happen there's a 20 dollars super chat from cobra command derp i had an epiphany action movies with male leads being badasses appeals to the male fantasy extreme competence movies with flawless women appeal to the female fantasy unearned perfection <laughs> this is why they rate themselves tens yeah yeah and um but the the uh, the unfortunate truth is the women don't go see those movies they do not yeah there's another 20 20 from carnal give gina carano a hollywood lead role and the exact same media outlet saying there's not enough strong female types will go completely Completely ape shit. The hypocrisy. Is it's powerful. not just that. Remember when Alita Battle Angel came out and they did the mm. same thing. They trashed Alita Battle Angel in favor of the Marvels as Got if him. both movies couldn't have shine, you know, sh shown with different audiences. That's I enjoyed like, that movie. There's a, like there's a the crossover there, but not internal. What? I liked Alita Battle yeah. Angel. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah. but the media trashed it because they were they were standing for Brie Larson in the Marvels really? at the time. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, but my original point with the Batman is when you have these roles, like there's a scene where. <clears throat> Batman and uh, the the uh, woman, Catwoman. Catwoman, is like on a balcony and they're having a conversation, and it's like a normal conversation about whatever, and then out of nowhere, almost like it's a reshoot, she's like, "Oh, oh this this town's just uh, ran by uh, rich white men, yeah, and like white supremacists," and he, then then it just goes to the next like dialogue, and it's completely un it's like irrelevant and then she kisses him who he's a billionaire rich white man and then she like starts making out with him i'm like this is so jarring and that happens in so many films for example it happened in dune but luckily it was like a very small bit like a one it was one line and it's like they were talking about the blue the blue yeah. worm juice and um he's like is it hurt and the lady's like oh for a woman yeah but it would kill a man yeah because you know men suck and i'm like there, <laughs> it, like feminism. That line didn't bother me as much. No, because no, well, it's so line, quick. The line you're talking about there. So I, I'm. This is a big one for me. So maybe it's because I wasn't politically aware when I was younger, right? Like I wasn't paying attention. Also, without in the ages before the internet was in your pocket, dialogue was written in a far more evergreen fashion. Like you said, the reason that line stands out to you is because it's a phrase that's very, very current year. And yeah. the fastest way to date your movie now is through language. Like it used to be. Like I love these. There's certain old shows that I. I love that are unapologetically of their time and I actually love yeah. the things like I love shows with old tech like I love shows yeah. with like people with palm pilots and stuff yeah. like that because it's awesome right but with language it's very very different I was watching an old episode of like The Mentalist the other night and they're like uh, he's talking to this dude uh, a, a man who lives on an Indian reservation and he's talking about who works at like a gift shop and he talks about like you you're not afraid of like you're not ashamed of peddling your own culture. He goes, this isn't my culture. And he points to like, this is not from my tribe, whatever. He says, he's like wearing like a war bonnet. And he says, it's a pastiche really, but that's what you Americans buy. So I sell it. If that was done today, it yeah. would be you white people. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it yeah. would be like, I would love to be able to do 
a watch along with people and point out the way that every single show back in the day was able to make it all encompassing and how it would be ruined these, this day. And I guarantee you, I wouldn't miss a single one. Guitarist Gabe got a $20 uh, super chat. A Wendigoon released his video covering Ruby Ridge yesterday. I guarantee Gen Z is becoming more based because of him and his videos. Please, for the love of God, have him on the show. Also, hi, Phil. Hi, Guitarist Gabe. Um, yes, uh, so we, I think at one point, uh, Aiden Mattis, who's of course, he runs Lore Lodge, he mm -hmm. was supposed to uh, get us in touch with him. I, I don't know if he would necessarily want to do here. I, I thought people had said that he's kind of apolitical, like he's got his political views, but I saw that thing recently where he kind of like apologized for his politics or mm, something a couple months idea. ago. A lot yeah, of things, the, the problem is, guys, is like when you're... Um, when you're like associated with Timcast, there are some people that just might not want to mm. because there's an association there that they just might not like because their audience, whatever. Yeah. I don't know if that's true for him, but yeah, I've know. been dealing with that like personally from a different situation a lot. Just left it. <laughs> just the, the way that's the way that leftists behave. Yep. So yeah, all right, you're outside um, of the uh, okay school of thought, you're uh, automatically the bad guy. Let us uh, go to Super Chats then, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start at the top here. This one is from, hold on, please. This one is from Jacob Parody. He says, Narbar's Candles is stocked, co stocked, cocked, and ready to rock. So grab your socks and do the moonwalk. Let's go. Come on, Phil. Let's hear it. What? Let's go, I guess. There you go. <laughs> uh, again, here's me being bad at reading. I'm, I'm, I'm not just bad at reading the articles, ladies and gentlemen. I'm even worse at reading the Super Chats because I have to like like toggle the mouse and like like move over as I'm reading it and it's just the whole thing is just a roller coaster ride there's another $20 super chat from Billdozer74 he says this has been a great conversation y'all I hate that I'm watching on KamiTube though do you have a Rumble channel and will you stream there uh, we've talked about simulcasting on Rumble at times. Like right now, it's the easiest way for us to reach an audience is YouTube. Yeah. Uh, if you don't, if you're not opposed to listening rather than watching, uh, we also we do on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and Pandora. I forget sometimes. Um, that we do the audio version as well. Sometimes I, re I forget, like, during the show, we'll be watching videos, and, like, whoever's listening to this just has to imagine in their head what they're watching. Yeah, it's like... Uh, but uh, uh, Max Max says, uh, Wendigoon loves guns and seems apolitical. Yeah, an apolitical oh. person might have a problem coming on to a show that's affiliated with Timcast. That's true, but also, it's, if he loves guns, you're automatically coded as right-wing, so it might not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, there's a $20 one from Service Businesses... Uh, I'm sorry, from Organized Business Services. Com. Guys, all the BS for 56 years with cerebral palsy. I gave up on U.S. women. I'm caught in two worlds. I make very good money and guys love me, but 99.9% .9 of the wives or girlfriends hate me versus my 25-year-old Filipina guys go to the Philippines. Not exactly sure what he was getting at there, but I read the words properly. That is, uh, tw so he's, his, uh, his, the woman that he's marrying? Was is it the woman? No, his girlfriend is okay. 25, years, 25 years old. Filipino. Um, yes, Based. Filipina. Yeah, so he yeah, should go based. to the Philippines. Uh, he's advocating your passport bro lifestyle. So. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's it. Dude, I've, I've met a lot of Filipino women, and they are based. Um, are you sure they're women? Oh, well. Or no, that's Thai. That's, that's Thai. Thai. Have yeah. you seen the meme? It says, like, uh, American women, Thai men. <laughs> the the <laughs> yeah. Thai man is, just looks yeah. like a super hot woman. <laughs> even, the Thai, even the Thai lady boys, like, they don't think that they're women. They're like, We're, I'm, I'm a lady boy. It's Shane like, H. Wilder says, Happy Friday, Brett Camelot and, Co and Commander Phil. I almost said Cobra Commander. Uh, and Commander Phil, have fun, but not too much fun. We don't want Mary to have, a, have to douse the studio in holy water again. Look, I don't think we're, like, we're not summoning demons or anything here. So, You're not? you know. No, I'm I'm not. I'm I'm not. Let's uh, let's do one more and then we will move on. This one's from Noah Sanders. Uh, it says, "Mother flipping Camelot. I'm glad I helped make this happen, even if it's just in my head. Pop culture neck and snack or or fight milk. Let's effing go!" Oh my God. <laughs> um, again, I, I think Mary would probably douse this place in holy water if there was oh, any nudity. Mary's going to hear about this, and she is going to disapprove. Yep, so no no nudity today, boys. No nudity. All right, let's go ahead and let's move on. I want to talk about Gen Z and their work ethic. And I'm actually, this is, this is a real article. It says, Gen Z is more likely to call in sick to work than Gen Xers, 20 years their senior, thanks yeah. to mental health crisis turbocharged by young women. I tell, yeah, we talk, but uh, yeah, mental health. It's, yep. it's all about mental health and women. Got a $20 one from Gordon Shumway. Actually, the Dune line is part of the lore. The only people who can drink the water of life are the Bene 
Gesserit because the Bene Gesserit, yep. Bene Gesserit because of their training, and the only man that can drink it is a Kizat Hadarak. And uh, so that that's the, why it matters that uh, Atreides like See, didn't survive. And it isn't it weird? Like it's it's crazy because that just existing in the lore, like makes it to where you can't really differentiate it because it is it, it goes right in line with modern language but it's for a different reason yep you know it's 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 for a completely different reason whereas like w i've been trained now to just hear anything that could even be remotely like that and be like oh that was forced well my problem is is like what they've done is we kind of lose either way because what they've done is racially and on gender lines they've made everybody critically conscious of people in this space so just the fact that you notice it is a loss for you it sucks yeah it's it's a loss for you and that's that's a problem so it says the stresses of adapting to work after college years have been a universal struggle struggle marred by new routines unsatisfying jobs and the loss of your social life but the new research suggests it's increasingly becoming a generational and gender-based struggle as well a troubling rise in the number of young people in the UK reporting mental health difficulties <laughs> like depression, anxiety, means they are now likely to call in sick more than Gen Xers who are 20 years their senior in a surprising turnaround for historic wellness trends. I don't think it's all that surprising, personally. Uh, research from the RF finds that more than a third of young people aged 18 to 24 suffer from what is described as a common mental disorder, or CMD, like depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder do you buy that 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 people are just that more people are bipolar than they were before uh not really no i i think that i think there are probably more people that are saying they are uh saying they're bipolar or saying that they're they have some kind of uh um neurodiagnosed undiagnosed condition or whatever that's what we need to i, I do we, we need to realize that these are all self-diagnosed conditions yep. because yeah. um I've uh, you know I've been around the block uh, when I was really heavily on Tinder. Like every other girl was talking about how oh I have uh, I have I'm, I have ADHD um, I'm I'm bipolar I'm depressed I'm blah, blah 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 they have all these things but they've never actually been diagnosed with any of it. They just it, say that they have these things to what absolve themselves of responsibility. If you it, like I'm I'm not particularly fond of people that are like oh I have this problem and, yeah. and you should know about it when we literally just met. Dude, that, that half those girls on Tinder, we'd sit down at the Mexican restaurant. Oh, look, Lala meet a great place in Huntsville, Alabama. And they, these girls would be like, oh, I have this, 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 this. And they're like telling me about all these like psychological elements they have, which they've actually never been diagnosed with. No, they just, they self-diagnose themselves with it. Um, they do that a lot with autism as well. Yeah. Nowadays. And it's, it's, it's very frustrating. And of course those people are going to self-report like on surveys or whatever that they have these conditions and then from a placebo effect they start feeling down and out and also from for men it's completely different for women it's self-diagnosed for men every piece of media they see they're evil and terrible yeah, yeah. so like men are like why, why would i do anything to better myself because obviously bettering myself is even seen as a more negative thing now yeah. if, so you, if, gonna, you, yeah. if you all the things that men are inspired to do or or the impulse that that men have to that ma to make themselves better they're all frowned upon Yep, hundred percent. Yeah, you go to the gym, frowned upon. Mm -hmm. It's actually racist to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, the what? jump has been turbocharged by a mental health crisis among women. Two out of five women in the UK are likely to report CMD compared to a quarter of men. There you go. Falls along gender lines. The analysis found that a number of young people taking time off work due to ill health has doubled in the last decade. The effects on work outcomes are becoming clear. People living with mental health difficulties are more likely to be working in low paid jobs compared to those with healthier colleagues. Well, yeah. And then also, if you have a job that makes more money and perhaps if you have a job that means more to you and you you care more about the actual work you're doing you're not going to be as willing even even if we operate on the premise that they're actually sick you're going to be more willing to just tough it out if you love the work yeah dude so like that it goes hand in hand i mean it would be like a graph it, people that no. generally have to push <laughs> what happened I got it. Brett hit the wrong button on the stream deck, and so my camera was off. And so it's just not, you guys talking. It was and it's just been like us. Five, it's been like five minutes, and I'm just where's, like, "Where's Phil?" And, and the there. chat noticed. Is he naked? No. Um, it's people like, "Is he stripping?" Yeah, dude. <laughs> Could have been that. Could have been that. Maybe. No, but uh, it's like a graph, man. Um, people that generally have to push a little harder and have to like grind a little bit harder, and then they start making a little bit more money, and then that starts to snowball, yeah. and they do it more and more and more, and they find out ways to do it more and more and more. They start getting fulfillment out of those things, and then suddenly the people that are you know pretty hyper successful and they have to grind to get there. Keep in mind it's it's earned, it's not given. It's something given is, is has no value. So 
people have to earn their way, they start feeling more, you know, they fulfilled by those things and they start su suffering for more of these, or they, they suffer less from these self-diagnosed yep. um, things. That's why people in worse jobs are gonna be, you know, like they're gonna be self-diagnosing these things more because they they don't find fulfillment from striving. I was just saying like work doesn't instill purpose like it used to. Yeah. Like in a lot of ways, I think a, a big part of that comes from a whole generation of people who were laid off before they like before they got their pension. Uh, I mean, and the and the new generation doesn't identify with their career the same way that old generations did. Or at least they certainly don't identify with the company that they work for because they're not staying as long as boomers did at the same job. Yeah, I think that the, I think that the reaction that young people have to a lot of things is because of their upbringing and it's not like part it's like partially big people are responsible for their own behavior and stuff like that but the fact that all of Gen Z kind of has a very similar outlook mm -hmm. it's not just because of the conditions it's literally because the way because of the way they're raised I mean like not just like I, I I'm super gonna sound like an old guy right but like when I was growing up and and when I was like learning how to be an employee like there there are books out there that teach you how to interact with people basics mm -hmm. ones like things like how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie that's a great book and it says the most obvious stuff but when you read it you're like yeah you know okay that makes sense like and if you're trying to like excel at a job and if you want to better yourself, there are certain things you can do that are gonna better your chances of excelling. They're not gonna, like you don't get a good opportunity just cause. You have to work to a degree where someone's like, oh, that person is worth giving the opportunity to because opportunities are rare mm -hmm. and they're valuable. Yeah. So like yeah. the, the, the re like the, that's where the whole, like, oh, you know, someone's lucky versus someone that prepares for it. Like the luck is when preparedness meet, meets opportunity and stuff. It's like, if you are not trying at your job, then the person that you're working for is going to know, and they're not going to do anything to help you. They're going to be like, this guy doesn't want to do the job. This person doesn't want to do the job. They don't care if they're here. So I'm not going to try to help them. That is what's going to happen. And there are ways around this. And there are books that people have written back in the day. They're old books, you know, how to win friends and influence people. Then there's another book called the go getter, which is like, just about like, Hey, go to work and try and it's gonna like in the long run that'll be better for you but kids have such an, a, a desire for an immediate gratification you know instant gratification they're like i don't want to work hard unless i know i'm getting something for it right away yeah and if, if yeah. the idea of working hard and like the fact that you work you're working hard is going to put you in a position where an opportunity might present itself to you like that's that's the the real thing, man. Dude, you know? these these things are so important. One, because, hey, one second. There's a there's a twenty. Oh, not never mind. Go, go ahead. ahead. My bad. These things are so important to every aspect of life because what you just said applies to relationships as well. Absolutely. So, people that will know how to grind, they know how to strive, they know how to work through adversity. You're going to have a lot of failure, especially if you're going through these things. They don't understand that instant gratification is not. It's not avail It's available in a lot of, uh, of courses of life, like Googling something, for example. Yes. You can Google a thing, find out an answer immediately. You have a pop that's busted. You have your uh, something wrong with your throwout bearing on your, you know, 68 Chevy, whatever it is. You can Google it, YouTube it, find out how to fix it immediately. You have in instant gratification. Anybody has access to that now. Same thing applies in work. Work climbing up through company ranks takes grinding there's yeah. no instant gratification there so yeah. people are going to be suffering that are used to that and they're brought up yep. in this uh this information age relationships are the exact same thing you which get is, to which is why divorces happen like they, like the reason the the reason that people don't stick around jobs and don't make careers and don't excel and feel like they're like oh jobs are just uh, you know i can't find the right job or whatever blah 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 is the same reason why they feel like they can't find the right relationship yeah dude Go it's ahead. because relationships man they, they are the one thing. You can't Google that shit. No. You're seven years in, you start feeling weird. Like, I don't know if I love this person. What's going on? And then you're like Googling, has anybody else felt this way? You you go to a shrink, they're telling you to leave. Yeah, the, and fir the first thing you're told is, well, maybe it's not right for you. Yeah. Like, right away. Right away. Like the first thing, it's like, you should be trying to save the relationship Knee first. jerk. They yes. knee jerk right out of the relationship. Yep. And the same thing when my ex-wife told me two months after she left. 
she like they called me and she's like i i met i don't i made a mistake i want to come home and after that po- after that point i was done yeah, like i had suffered through the th- and i moved on the i was on the other side i was like it was like the scene in shawshank where freaking andy climbs through the shit and he comes out and it's raining on you i was getting rained on i i went through the exact same thing with my ex-wife yeah and only like i was like because i'm married if one I, and I and I believe this, if you're married, if one person says I want to save the relationship, the other person is obligated to say I will try because you made that promise. Yeah. That's why relationships yeah. fall apart. One person says I don't want unless they're both like oh I want to leave, you know, which is that's fine. But like if one person's like I want to leave and the other person's like I don't want you to leave, right? The other person that's like I want to leave is like they're out, and it's like the reason the relationships don't work is because people are just like I want out, so I'm just going to leave and they I don't work and, and I won't try. Dude, know? that's what I had that. Same conversation. I yep. was like, I would let's can we like do something for two months where we go see somebody mm-hmm. and talk to somebody and try to figure this out? And she was like, I don't want to try. And yeah. I'm like, okay, well then I should have let I should have been like, fine. I should have I should have not gone back because it ended up ending anyways. But go ahead. Yeah, but that was it was literally the Andy Dufresne getting rained on. Except I was yeah. getting rained on by like tender bitches, and um, <laughs> it was great. But I was over it, and I'm glad I didn't go back through that because I'm pretty sure it would have ended again the exact same way. Mm-hmm. And it was it's why I started doing youtube and it's why i started racing and all this is because i i found out that you know through that sh- ultimate strife and i know it sounds really dumb but through that brutal breakup that i had because it was my entire life i was 19 you know when we got together and now i'm in my late 20s my 20s are gone now yeah. right and um through that brutal breakup i understood that i can achieve different things that I just set my mind out to. I left my old job, got a job that was much bigger, much more important, started doing that, started doing YouTube, and I just grinded at it with nobody watching. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly people started watching. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to get a race car. So I started racing and I started grinding at it. And it was brutal uh, hauling a car myself across the country every weekend. And it was brutal. And I was like going broke. And then then NASCAR started happening. And now I grind at that. And I just keep pushing forward and pushing mm-hmm. forward and pushing forward. But people are not used to doing things yeah. that are hard. Yeah. That mindset is also something that's almost impossible to teach these days. Yeah. At least I, I believe that. And I notice this very, very consistently with my friends. And it's hard to get people to believe it. Yes. Because because yeah. anybody can make those platitudes. Anybody can say those platitudes, yep. right? The problem is, is that with the platitudes, however accurate it might be, comes a lot of work. And people believe that if there's work involved, then what you're selling them is a bill of goods, even though you're saying, no, I'm not saying this is easy. I'm just saying that this is how you do it, right? I busted my nuts for 10 yeah. years before I released the record that put all the remains on the map yeah yeah right for 10 years busting my hump in bands trying to learn how to write songs that actually are compelling trying to learn how to be in a band how to be a front man how to sing how to scream how to do all the stuff learn for 10 it it took me 10 years before we put out the record that put us on the map and that isn't even when i started making money i didn't start making money until about five years after that and i didn't even make good money until we got off our record deal and like I owned, you know, I was getting actual mm. royalties. And That's stuff, so you know? important because I'll, I, and I'm sure, I'm sure you get this, Brett. Every day somebody DMs me and they're like, man, I want it. All I want to do is do content creation. That's like my dream is to do content creation. And I stopped helping these people and it's nothing against them, but I, I would help so many. I would try, I would, I would talk to people for hours. I would just, because I love seeing people be successful. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, just do this, 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 and don't stop. Even when you think no one's watching, just don't stop. Because at one point, the al- algorithm is going to notice you're putting the work in. And they're like, all right, let's put some ad space there. Because this guy's obviously, he's dedicated. Let's yep. see if we can grow. And that's how that, that stuff works. You don't just put out a video and get famous. No. It take, If you look at every creator when they pop up in your feed, it's like, oh, I've never seen this person before. You click on it, there is years of videos. There's yeah. always years of video. It's never the first video. It's never the 20th or 30th or 50th. And I'm like, just no, do the this. the channel's been around for right. a decade. And I'm like, do yeah. this for six months straight with nobody watching. Put work into it. Get you a decent camera. Get you a good audio setup and have some compelling videos that something you care about, but something that's broad and start pushing towards it. And I, and people will be like, yeah, I'm going to do that. And they'll do all the, the first day stuff and they'll put out one video and they'll never touch it again. Because nobody watched the first video and they get discouraged. And I'm like, you you missed it. Yep. Like, dude, I, my first six months, nobody watched. You have to be very, you have to care a lot about whatever you choose to talk about, right? Like, yeah. One of the things like for us here is like uh, me and me and Mary will split between topics that she cares a lot about and topics that I care a lot about. And you can tell by the engagement bet- with the other person, which ones that person cares about, and which ones that person cares about. And that's good. That's fine. Actually, what I like about that for our channel is that it allows us to have like a very, very broad scope about the stuff we like to talk about. For instance, 
today, the stuff we've talked about today wouldn't necessarily always be up on an episode where, that Mary was on because we would just, we would have to go back and forth. What videos have been doing well? What is, uh, what is the topic right now that's hottest to get into and how do you figure that out? And all of that, just, it's all based on whether you're willing to just keep going. And I, we were talking off air beforehand that like, look, there are ups and downs, peaks and valleys. And people are, uh, will ask me like what it's like when, like when the show's doing really well is like, I try to not actually think about it at all because me like emotionally I just disconnect from it so when it's doing really really well great when it's not doing really really well that's fine too I'm yeah. gonna do the work the same yeah and to me it's more about showing up every day and the thing that I've really really enjoyed is that I don't even really care as much like when people get like we, we saw a comment yesterday where somebody's like this channel just loves to whip their base up into a frenzy and lie I'm like bro what are you what? Like, I just want to come on here and talk about stuff I think is interesting and fun. Yeah. And if people want to take a couple hours out of their day to watch this because they like Mary's opinions, because they like my opinions, because they like the shows when Phil's on, they like it when Sarah's on, what when we have guests, all that's well and good. But I just want to be even keel and go every day and give somebody something to watch. And that's my, for me, like everybody has to have their reason for doing it, right? It took me a while to figure out what it was about this show that I love doing about it. And I think more than everything, it's just showing up every day and giving the people that do watch mm -hmm. something to, something to enjoy. Yep. Yeah. And, and that's more than enough for me. That, yeah, and yeah. in our channel is, it's a little bit different because uh, our channel has been around about two, a little over two years. Uh, but obviously this was born out of a company, not born out of uh, an individual. So it's a little bit diff different for everyone involved. But I just find that with most people today, like I have friends that I know believe in the ability to build on their own and some that just don't look at the world that way. And you can always tell the mindset of that person by how they perceive the success of others. Yeah, I, I mean, part of the reason why I see the world that I, the way that I do is because like my dad owned a, owned a business when I was growing up. Like, so he was always out there hustling, working for himself. He was, you know, a contractor and stuff. He wasn't, he didn't have someone else that was providing him with a, a, a paycheck every week. And so that to me was pretty normal. Yeah. I know there are people out there that that is super not normal and they're terrified of it. Yeah. And I understand why, you know, it's like when you're like, I don't know how I'm getting paid. You know, I don't, I've got bills coming and I don't have any money coming in right now. Like that's scary. You know, thankfully, like things have worked out for, for me where I don't have that worry, but at the yeah. same time, it's like, I, I get it. But those, you don't get to the point, like, like I love being here and stuff, but like, even if I wasn't here, all that remains takes care of my, my, my needs. And I don't have to worry about, you know, paying my bills and all that remains hasn't released a record in six years, you know? So it's like that kind of stuff doesn't come from working for someone else. That kind of stuff, that kind of security only comes from working for yourself and creating something, you know? So you have to get out there and you have to build something and take the risks that come along with building it. Yeah, like getting fired. I got fired from Walmart and I had to just jump full time into YouTube. Yeah. And it worked out. And I can't take time off. Like One thing a lot of people say in the chat is like when I'm sick or something. But like, dude, just take some time off. I'm like, bro, like, I, can't, I have a mortgage. I have a mortgage. I can't. You cannot. I have to be here. <laughs> you know? I mean, even yeah. if it's even not just that, but like for us, it's like too long outside of if you're not doing live five days a week for us, like algorithmically, we will suffer yeah. if we take too much time off. And that's yep. just you have to care about the work and you have to be connected to it. Otherwise, that's going to seem like hell. So. All right, yeah. let's go to some super chats here. We will check that, and then we're going to talk about uh, your future in racing, which is yeah. fantastic. All right, yeah. let's get into it here. This one here is from Serenko Productions. Says, boys, 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 boys. Yeah. Yes, correct. Shane H. Wilder says, Fairlife milk is the best milk. Screw PETA. There yeah, you go. kill those baby cows. <laughs> <laughs> Slap him right in the fat little face. Lincoln right. Knight says, hell yeah, good to see my guy Camelot on PCC. Yes. Uh, Bird Flu C. Williams says, uh, I bomb atomically like Socrates' philosophies. I bomb atomically? Song lyrics. Oh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, okay. Corey Anderson says, Phil, I will give $5 to get Mary to watch Porky's. Oh, my God. I mean, I would, I would, I would match your $5. Five bucks. <laughs> yeah. T Dog says, Are Hollywood actresses aware that teenage boys love it when they do nude scenes in movies and television? Yeah, please. I mean, not even teenage boys. I'm like in my 30s, man. Let's I mean, it. 
Look, I, I, for me, I just find most of it, uh, like the most of the sex scenes today aren't done in a way that actually advances the story in any way, and it makes it harder to sell uh, these products to families, which supposedly they want to do. Dude, I never even see sex scenes anymore. Mm. Like, if I did, movies, I, no, TV, yes. I'm literally the Leonardo DiCaprio meme. Every time a titty falls out in a movie, I'm like, nope. Movie, movie, <laughs> movies, <laughs> <Every> no. <time. laughs> TV, TV, you definitely see it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's 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 pretty rare for me. Did, did you watch Saltburn? You should go watch Saltburn. No. <laughs> all right. Well, hold off on the rest, and we'll come back after we talk to you about what's going on with your career. So, first of all, you should tell everyone about how you made the leap into NASCAR because you gave us a little bit about your story, which is that you were you were working at Walmart yeah. and then you switched full time to YouTube content creation, and now you've branched out and you're doing even more. Yeah, it's it, it's very random. Everything's random, man. Um. It, I guess it maybe it's not. I guess at this point, uh, maybe it just comes from the grind. Yeah. But um, yeah, I did YouTube for years, and um, YouTube uh, a lot of me the uh, you know, a small amount of revenue to buy a car. Um, it wasn't that expensive. It was like twenty eight grand. I bought an old cup car, like an NASCAR cup car, and I, I I took it to random racetracks and was testing it, wrecked it at Daytona, and then rebuilt it immediately uh, with the garage shop at Aaron Brown, and then I took it to Rockingham. This was years ago. I took it to Rockingham, and I um, I was testing it. I got some new tires, and I roughly put a setup on it from like NASCAR racing season 2003. I was like, I, you can't find this stuff. It was so much so proprietary and secretive back in the day. So I found out like a rough setup, went out to Rockingham, and all the guys at Rockingham, they all had old cup cars. So um, they're all going like 100 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour at Rockingham. My ass is double that. Yeah. On the old surface, I am blaring this car around there because I just don't care. I don't. I, I can't help it when I get in a car. I put it through the floor, and I just it's very redneck. I know. So we were going real fast, and there was a couple guys there actually testing, quote unquote. Well, they already got fined. I guess I can talk about it. They were actually <laughs> testing. They were testing for some Xfinity stuff, and um, they got fined for it or whatever. And <laughs> anyways, so one of the guys from that team came over to me and he's like, "Hey, man, like, you have racing experience?" And I'm like, "Nope." This is like, I'm just out here testing. And he's like, well, that's interesting. You're going real fast around here. Um, so he's like, hey, you should go race in this series. Um, that the, There's some ARCA guys are starting. And I was like, okay, cool. So I, I took my car out there. You can just take your car out there and put a restrictor plate on it. And we ran. And uh, I, it was a big learning curve because there was a lot of big NASCAR guys out there. And they were winning and stuff. And I was getting lapped. And through the course of two years, I got to where I was running in the top five consistently and finishing right behind the leaders, not five, 15 laps behind them. So... That same guy calls me, I think it was first week of January or last week of December. And he's like, hey, man, like, do you want to race in NASCAR? And I'm like, I don't see how that's possible. What do you mean? And he's like, oh, dude, just submit a resume. I'll contact this guy. We'll contact this guy. We'll, we'll get everything together, and we'll try to make this happen. And then you can just come to Daytona, and you test. And if they approve you for the test, like, they approve your license, your full competition license after, you just race, man. And I'm like, okay. So I just took the bull by the horns. We had to go get a, had to do, a, like, a heart test, like a physical do all these things uh, done at the doctor, like by an MD, had to be signed off by an MD, all this stuff. Um, and then I go there and I, um, you know, I do the Daytona test. We, we passed. And then the, uh, suddenly I'm just qualifying for, you know, Daytona for the ARC series, um, which we didn't make, which was sad. But I do race March 8th, which is next Friday. My first actual like sanctioned event's going to really happen um, at Phoenix. Yeah. So I'll be racing at Phoenix next uh, Friday. Um, in the ARCA race there. Uh, and then the goal is to do some Xfinity stuff as well. So it's going to be very interesting, but I don't know how it happened. Uh, but it's, it's expensive too. Oh, it's unbelievable. Ridiculously expensive. Um, just to get in the seat. Uh, a lot of people don't realize it. And uh, it's it's the way any auto sport is because uh, a lot of people are mad at me um, because me and my buddy Ethan, we did this uh, campaign to fund uh, Talladega and Dover. I've got Ethan's been on the show here, so yeah, he's great. Uh, they they yeah. know Ethan Van Skyver. So it says uh, I put this on the screen. It says here are four Cyber Frog wraps. Obviously, that's his character. Yeah. Uh, for Camelot's race car, which one do you like best? There's a poll, so let's look at him here. So here's uh, yeah. here's one. Here is two. This was your I personal loved it. favorite. Love your two. personal favorite was two. Here's three. Yeah. And there's four. Four. Looks yep. like number one was yeah. the winner. It looks great. Yep. Um, there you so go. It looks great. Uh, I just preferred two because I like the red. But no. So yeah. So we did a campaign, and uh, we got one hundred and eighteen thousand dollars from nice. the campaign, which was unfreaking believable, man. Um, and we're gonna do a wrap for Talladega and Dover. Um, but Talladega is the big one. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna be on a good team. We're gonna have a really good car. Um, I've already talked to the people. Um, and uh. 
we're going to have that wrap on the car and we're going to, it's going to be on TV and everything. It's going to be a big, big deal. Um, but the thing about it being expensive and hell, hell comics gate and EBS for doing that for me and, and keep partnering with me on that. Um, cause a lot of people, there's a lot of people that were angry about that. Cause a lot of people like, don't like people in certain parts of the spectrum for whatever reason. And there was people mad at me over taking that sponsorship money. And I'm like, dude, there's no one else standing up and doing it. Wait, why were they mad? Well, nah, it's just, uh, there's weird drama in all these different communities and stuff. And you know, uh, that's just part of the game, I guess. And I got, you know, sucked into it just because I exist in the spectrum. But going back to how expensive it is, I mean, it's, it's, it is 20 grand bar none per race to get out there and get in a seat and, you know, do it. Yeah. Right. Because it's, um, you'll see, you'll notice, cause like I said, somebody was mad at me over it. They're like, why didn't you just sell your car? and sell your like sell your house to do this and i'm like there is not a nascar driver out there that doesn't have a logo on his car man yeah. every single nascar driver has a logo on their car they have sponsorship that's funding their way to do this um because for, just for a team to get out there they have to spend 12 grand in tires per weekend yeah so the sponsorship covers that and that's why ebs stepped in and i'm still looking for sponsorship all year um all year you like to, to just get to the end of the year. And right now I got about five races um, with EBS on board. Uh, and people, they don't, they, they think I should just sell all my stuff. I'm like, that's what do you mean? Like Pete, these drivers don't pay for it themselves. Sponsorship does. Companies yeah. do. Um, and a lot of them do have support through other companies and whatnot. Obviously, like maybe their dad owns it or their uncle owns it. I get it. My I grew up on a trailer. Um, I didn't move out of that trailer until I was 19. Um, and I worked a dead-end job until I was 27. And then I started YouTube at 28. And, um, you know, I, uh, I I just have a lot of people that support me. And we've we've got there. We've got there with five races. But, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, you, you just have to have that sponsorship. And it's not really expensive. I mean, we've, we've talked about it. And we've had a, I've had a lot of other companies. I'm meeting with some companies in Phoenix. Um, and just just one race, you know, is just the biggest deal. Because, like, I, I, I don't really foresee much after this year happening. <laughs> but because it's just it's so damn expensive. And uh, I'm just thankful that uh, a few people have stepped on board and have helped it because uh, it's been it's it's unbelievable. And it's not just that you've also been getting swatted on the regular. Oh, yeah, of course. What? Oh, yeah. Like, what dude, I don't even know what the hell's going on anymore in my life. <laughs> uh, I was uh, streaming last week. Uh, I think it was last Monday. And uh, I, um, I'm just streaming. I'm, I'm about to end my stream. It was a really big stream too. We were talking about the VTuber drama with Ninja Sanji and uh, uh, that uh, Setin, Selen uh, Taksumi is the VTuber in the VTuber culture. VTuber people uh, don't really care for me too much because I had a falling out with Pippa Pipkin, um, which shouldn't have happened, uh, but whatever. And um, I was covering that, and I guess you know those fans are a little wild. And I was just sitting there, and I heard a fire, fire like a tra- it sounded like a train horn. Yeah. And there's no train beside my house. And it scared the hell out of me. I took my headset off and I look and I go look at the window and there the entire street, all the way down my street, it's just fire trucks and cops and fire rescue vehicles and an ambulance. Just a whole street, man. And I'm like, what the hell? So I go downstairs and there is just like 30 firemen in my front yard, full gear and cops. And the dude's like, immediately, I'm like, I'm like what's going on? And the guy's like, are you, is this 124? Do you live here? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, so I'm like, all right, cool. So the guy walks up and he's like, so we were told like the guy lived here, like set his house on fire and he's intending on setting all the houses on fire in the neighborhood. And I'm there's like, there's no fire. There's no fire. Yeah. That's what he said. He's like, yeah, there's no fire. So he, um, I was like, yeah, this is probably a swatting. And then you, when you say that, they all like immediately relax. They're like, oh, this is what the, yep. This is yeah, swatting. Man. And then the cops, they wanted to get a statement. So I talked to them. And uh, as they stayed there for about another twenty minutes, and then they left. I was here the, like one of the first times that this uh, that this res- like this place got swatted, and me and Andy were were outside as the cops were coming up, and then basically basically like hands up right now, walk backwards towards our voice. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Luckily, where I live, no knock no warrant, no knock warrants are highly illegal. Yeah. So they're they're always very very cool. Like when that happens, thank God. Uh, in the in the chat, Russell Romick says so much drama being a podcaster. It's insane. It it just does not matter to me. Luckily, that doesn't really happen here. I'd like to think for the most part, this uh, we stay out of it with most stuff. But like when people like leave comments about like uh, looking like where they like read really into like what you're talking about or things you say, yeah. and I'll just never understand it because the whole point of something like this is whatever I'm saying. Whatever we're saying here, what I want is to give people who like this show something to watch. And I'll just never understand this, like, just unbelievable attitude people have towards yeah, these things. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's anything. Um, it, 
the, you just this the best to ignore it. And that's what I do. But yeah. the unfortunate truth is my entire life is based around like talking to people in this spectrum and talking to people like that do on other channels like Critical Drinker and all these people that are my friends in real life. Um, and then you'll go on a show or whatever or accept sponsorship like in my uh, situation. And it m may or may not make these people not want to associate you with you anymore. It's like the movie Brink where they get mad for rollerbladers taking sponsorships. Look, the, I mean, the, the, <laughs> the problem is, unfortunately, this is this goes right along with the whole like problem with leftists and stuff like that. It, it's because you say things that are outside of the political correct, except what's acceptably politically correct. And so people feel like they're in like they're entitled to do something about it. It's. It's a, a really huge problem in America, like the the attitude that the left has nowadays. And it's not all people that feel like they're a little bit on the left, but like the far left people. Like it's a real big problem when they're just like, let's call the police to try to get this person hurt. It's a real big problem yeah. when they're like, let's go ahead and try and get this this uh, event closed down because we don't like what they say. It's a real big and and the things the topics that they have a problem with are not sig like bad things. They're like he thinks that men should are men and women are women. It's like those yeah. kind of things. It's like he likes big boobs, so we yeah. gotta you know. <laughs> yeah, so. and the the I guess the most hurtful form of it is when. You know, it's not even based in politics and you just have a person on your show or you go on a show and the people don't like the person on said show and like people that you've drank with in the past, ate with, stayed with, like suddenly don't want to associate with you anymore. And they're like real friends. It's the weirdest thing. I, I can understand viewers being weird. But like when you when your real friends stop associating with you, that's like it's like heartbreaking. There was a lot of people that like in 20. I mean, I've always been fairly against the grain like publicly yeah and like my label used to hate it and blah 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 and there were p there have always been people that are just like ooh, phil says things that are that you know make me nervous and blah 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 so it's like i get what you're saying but at the same time like people that are like that are just garbage <laughs> yeah crisis party hey <laughs> Perfect timing. I'll right never ahead. understand. I'll never understand the the way people take it super seriously. Like somebody in the chat said, Tim Cast has been swatted. Yes, like seven times. Yeah, a bunch whatever. of times. But the thing is, is like that's politics, and I don't agree with it. And I think it's insane. But I I get where the insanity comes from. Everything's politics on the left, though. That's the problem. It's not. It's like you don't get the option of of opting out. You can't just say yeah. I'm not political. There is uh, is I like big boobies political. Cause that'll that, get, yes. that it's will get you it swatted. Shouldn't it shouldn't be, but it, <laughs> yeah. like that's the thing. It's like, oh, you know, I I have this opinion. Like I think that, and whatever it may be, whether it be, you know, I think I don't think that there's any global warming. I guarantee that there are people out there that if you say that, they're gonna be like, you know what, yeah. you need a visit from yeah. the police. Yeah, you know, exactly. everything has become political nowadays. So. I no yeah. longer believe that. Uh, I I don't care whether. Glo like climate change or global warming is real or fake. I'm pro climate change now. Yeah. I, I believe that this, this planet could do with being a couple degrees warmer personally. All right, let's finish up these super chats here and we will, uh, and we will get on out of here. So let's see what we got here left. Uh, we got through Bulldozer. We got through Noah. I just want to make sure the hard part here is like Mary usually reads the super chat. So I'm catching back up. Uh, it says from Corey Anderson says now that Mary is not here, all movies should have gratuitous titties in them. Yeah. Movies for adults. That is. Yeah. Mary would disagree with you. I, I would say that usually they're not usually done in a way that's super interesting. But uh, I again, I always say I don't have an objection to it. I just find that most of the sex scenes today don't don't actually make sense when they're put in the shows. They just throw them in there because the studio mandates it. There and are that's more TV than movies. There are definitely websites that you can go to where there are just boobies everywhere. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. We, I will not draw you to those, but you yeah, can I'm find those on your own. I'm not telling you what the of, names of, course, of these websites, are, but I'm sure that they're out adult, there. If you are an adult, I want to go up here and make sure I didn't miss any here. I just want to notice that uh, I, I didn't want to leave any behind because I could have forgotten someone. Uh, yeah, this one is from Noah Sanders. says, uh, have you guys noticed we never see titties in movies anymore? Camelot 3, uh, 331. Uh, in the best podcast intro known to, uh, no to man. Thank you. Get Brett a good <laughs> intro video. Thank you. We don't do a video intro. You see us on the camera for our intro. That's the thing. We don't have an intro. Yeah, mine's just me us. twerking. It is. <laughs> it is. Uh, then I read Corey Anderson's. Now we're down to Gordon Shumway says, Brett, is Terrence Howard going to on your wall of fame of tax evaders? Yes, I do have, um... I do, in fact, have uh, several photos that you know will eventually be put up here. Oh, that's of great! Various people nice. Who have not paid their taxes. Good for you know, her. bravely standing up against a tyrannical federal government. I bet. Nice. You've got 
Nicholas heroes. Good. Just absolute heroes. Willie Nelson. Every single one of these people are based. Yep. Oh, even Chris Tucker. Look at that. Yep, and Chris Tucker. So, you know, <laughs> all, brave, awesome. all brave men and women who yeah. have stood up against uh, an Don't evil fascist this. government. So yes, maybe I will have to. I don't like the racial aspect of what Terrence Howard was saying there, but you know, yeah, of course not. You know, I, I if he's if he's bravely standing up against paying his taxes, of then... course not. But at the same time, I mean, it's like, look, if you've got that card as an option, there's there's going to be people that are going to play it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Seth Essington says Mary is the goat of goats. Well, Mary is uh, going to be back on Monday. You can tell her that on Monday that she's the goat. Uh, Bad Adam Twelve says. Uh, Let's see, hey Cody, I, f I funded the Cyberfrog car. What do you expect it? Uh, when do you expect it to be finished? Go Speed Racer, go! Oh, the car? Oh, uh, probably like a week or two before the race. There you so go. like in April, first week of April. Chief says, "Here's one for the boys." All right, uh, we got St. Miles. We got down there. Shane H. Wilder says, "So is take a bump, just Folgers instant coffee." No, it was just it was literally it's just it's just ground up caffeine that you snort, and I couldn't believe that was a real thing. All the all the damage to your nasal like passage and none of the fun. <laughs> Why would you do that? It sounds horrible. Uh, let's see. I lose my place here. This the hardest part here is keeping up with everything without getting too far down there. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, the 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 super chat stuff. It's tough to keep managing when you're dealing with like the not the uh, the big ones. Yes, that's why it's uh, when Mary's here. It's easier to follow along when you got two people doing this. Uh, username Mary would not pronounce says happy Friday. My yearly review is this month. Wish me luck. Good luck, my friend. Oh yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it goes it. well for you. That's what we need. Keep your job. Uh, Gordon Shumway says, let me get the, wait, where to say, let me get this straight. Women complain, uh, all of the, wait, women complain all of them, all of the, that <laughs> women complain that men are little babies when they get sick, but somehow at least half of women self diagnose is crazy. Yeah, but they're different. Yeah, <laughs> it's different. Yeah, the, 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 honestly, because like you know, mentally ill and and physically are, ill are very different. Uh, the real Hydro PX says, "Did Mary skip because Kumerlot was on the Biggest Degenerate on YouTube?" Yes. Uh, no, uh, Mary. Mary is doing another podcast this weekend. She's traveling to do Mike Lerner's The New Nation podcast. Uh, she will be back on Monday, I believe. Uh, and then Salty Bag of Nuts says, bragging here, married 20 years to my high school sweetheart, two great you. kids. I'm 42 years old and you. still in great shape. Survivor nice. of California. Let's Good go. Nice. Wow, listen to this That's, guy. This guy just posts W's, man. W Base. after W after W. King. Grofty says, we love the content. Much needed to disconnect. Um, maybe distraction. Like, I think it's a distraction. The whole point is I want to give you guys something that's fun to listen to and laugh at so that when you have to go back to the crappy real world, it's, yep, it's yep. easier to handle. That's what it's all about. That's right. Shane H. Wilder says, as I have said, I watch for Brett's movie and TV takes and Mary's Catholic morality and Phil's badassness owing for the means. The, oh, memes. the memes are good. The memes are solid. Uh, organized Business Services says, "Question, guys, you uh, guys, you were both married. Did you? Did your exes ever told you that she wanted what she wanted in life? This is the way women in the U.S. rips me apart. What do you want from me? My money or what? I know, uh, I know, I'm disabled, but I was lucky. They uh, don't. But know. maybe I was lucky. They don't know. Yeah, they they they, they will know. tell you I don't know, but I don't. I want to. I want. It's like FOMO. They're like I want to." Yep. I want to experience something else, and I have never experienced the thing that I think I want to experience, which is just uh, being broke, living in an apartment, and getting uh, pumped and dumped. Uh, Serenko Productions is saying <laughs> I skipped some super chats. Which ones did I skip, uh, Phil? If you got to, if you got to take off, I, yeah, I got to mostly. Listen, I love you guys. I am not going to be back next week, nor the following week. I'm going to LA. I'll be back in like three weeks. But uh, yeah, if you want to follow me on Twix, it's Phil That Remains. On Instagram, it's Phil That Remains Official. And uh, the band is All That Remains. You can follow us on Apple Music, Spotify, uh, you know, the internet. You know the whole thing. There you so. go. I love you all. So, and I love you guys too. Good. Cheers. When are you, are you leaving the building? Yeah, yeah I got to get, I got to go let my dog out and then I got to get back to for IRL. Oh, tonight. cool. I'll be here. Right, cool. I want to just snap a picture before you leave. Absolutely. All right, uh, St. Miles says, I snorted my iced tea, take my money, guys. Did we read that one, Phil? I think no. we read that one. Did we? we did read that one. Yeah. We did that one? Okay, so uh, I, somebody's got to let me know who it was that I skipped. Again, this is much harder when there's just one person person doing it, but I'm not trying to leave anyone out here. Uh, 
Oh, here we this one. So Gordon Shumway says, I used to dip the instant coffee grinds in my MREs in the field, uh, and the privates in butter bars used to look at me like I was insane. Yeah, I'm not. Now they make like coffee in like, um, they look like chew. Yeah. Have you seen those? Yeah. Or, yeah, I've have seen, you seen those. those? Yeah. Ah, hold on. Now we got to go. There we go. Uh, otherwise, we would have been chair cast for the rest <laughs> of the day today. All right. Uh, if if we've got one more here, Corey Anderson says, can y'all ask Hannah Claire Brimlow if, uh, if SCNR, I think, is that scanner or screener? Somebody will have to let me know. I always forget that one. Has an email for tips and leads. I can ask her tonight. I usually see her when I'm on my way out. Uh, Saranko, let me know. Which was the other one that I missed? If, they, if you don't know, looks like that's all of them. All right, guys. Uh, tell Cam- oh, wait, one more here from Sketch Therapy says, tell Camelot I said hi, please. Thank you, Sketch. I love you. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and then Russell Romick says, LA, Phil's going to be on the whatever podcast. No, Phil's going to, Phil's going to do his real job. Like his actual job. Yeah, you dude. You know, his actual job. All right, guys. Uh, I'm gonna. If I miss some, I apologize. But we're lost in the in the shuffle here. We did a lot today, and you guys came out for the show. So thank you so much for that, Camelot, my friend. Let everyone know where they can find you, dude. I'm Camelot three three one on everything. Uh, ha- at Camelot off, or sorry, at Camel Cast off on Twitter. Um, it's like I keep getting banned on Twitter for literally no reason. So uh, please follow that on there. I keep everything up to date on there. It's Camel Cast off. OFF at the end. Uh, follow that there for any and upcoming news. If you are a company or if you are an individual and you want to be on national TV in front of 522,000 average concurrence on FS1, FS2, um, send me a DM, get on my car, help me uh, survive the dream for one year and uh, um, also get you represented as well. Um, got a, I'm on Rumble, YouTube, Instagram is Camel, Camel, uh, Camelot331. And uh, yeah, dude, a lot of good things going on. So we got a couple more here. Cobra Commander says veggie lasagna MREs. You'll ask yourself, how long does it take to starve? <laughs> Anyways, I've had the Ugh. veggie lasagna Ugh. MREs. Oh god. Uh, I look. I actually bought like a bunch of the mm. the MREs. I would eat them before work because oh, they, no. they would be really good for like like there's certain foods I just can't eat before going live because I get really bad brain fog. Yeah. But most of the MREs I've enjoyed. I, I really like the like the tortellini MRE. That's always really good. Uh, Shane H. Wilder says, I had a professor who would make a cup of coffee and then pour two five-hour energies into Oh, my into God. It. Holy, that sounds like something Carter would do here. If you don't know Carter, Carter does the music for this company, and he is never without an energy drink in hand. Yeah, dude. Uh, and he also drinks the five-hour energies, which I found absolutely insane. Uh, Sketch Therapy says, ask Tim Pool. Maybe he wants to sponsor. Yes. Well, actually, you had reached out to me before yeah, yeah. about this, and, and I, I sent Tim all the info, but saying, you know, he's a busy dude. He's got a lot of stuff going on. So perhaps Perhaps we can uh, do that yeah, today, to yeah, get in to front you. of him and, and talk about this because that's a good audience to get in front of, I think. Yeah, um, it's it's bigger than people realize. I mean, just uh, just my f- like my first sponsors, uh, we've had so much awesome like Twitter stuff. I mean, look at look at Ethan Van Scabber. Yeah. I mean, everybody's been talking about this for two weeks now. It's nonstop. I mean, you can see that there's value in it with so many people that back that campaign. Um, so, uh, and especially, I mean, there's people flying in from all over to the Talladega race yeah. to see all this. That, so, um, it's going to be really cool, man. Mick Steller, MC, uh, Mick Steller says, uh, people ate super chatting just to keep you on. I think he meant to say people are super chatting yeah, yeah, yeah. just to keep you on. <laughs> Look, we can stay on. Like, if you guys want to stay on, we can stay on. But that's, uh, I, I don't know what uh, Camelot wants to do. I'm always more than happy to just stay on. I just want to like, pee at some point. <laughs> like, uh, exactly, right? So, yeah. all right, guys, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram and Twix at Brett Dasovic on both of those platforms. PCC is here five days a week, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. We are on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify if you would prefer to listen rather than watch. And if you want to follow the show on social media, we are on Twix at PopCulture underscore show, Facebook and not TikTok because we were banned at Pop Culture Crisis and on Instagram at Pop Culture Crisis Pod. One more here from Rhaegar Targaryen says, uh, Shane H. Wilder, I say this on behalf of, uh, of the chat. The fuck? <laughs> also, is he still living? Is who still living? Shane H. Wilder is still living. I don't know who he's talking about there. Right? No idea. Yeah. Uh, Gordon Shumway says, drink a pint of Cuban coffee. Wire doesn't even <laughs> begin to scratch the surface. Wait, what was the uh, Panera like? Like lemonade that was like killing people this year. Oh my god, I don't even remember, but it was it, it was basically just cocaine. It was like supercharged yeah, lemonade. Yeah, yeah. It was like there was a, I saw this thing earlier this year where it was a, a woman made a TikTok that said um, 
Sleepy Girl Mocktail, and it was like promethazine <laughs> Sprite oh in a Jolly Rancher. And I'm like, that's just lean. Jesus. You're just doing rap drugs now. God, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, with that being said, we will be back with another episode on Monday. We will see you then. Bye, guys. Hell yeah.